shifts and we got pizza moving boxes because checkers will beat us life is hard here working out in space security comes knocking shoot them all in the face now gun cargo gun cargo gun cargo That was Gun Cargo, which uh, they're, they're going to say is um, Country Roads, which it, it is not. It is it is not. It is not Country Roads. One moment as I get my co-host. Hello, Mr. Diggs. Hello. Hail Cargonia, Gun Cargo. Hail Cargonia, Gun Cargo. You know, it's really weird. Um, we started playing Space Station 14 recently. Uh, which is free on Steam. Space Station 14 is absolutely free on Steam. Just and apply. Just apply. And yeah, all you have to do is apply, and they're like, congratulations, you're in. But what's hilarious is um, we found on one server, it said basically, uh, it said basically that um, <laughs> gun cargo is forbidden. They, they said no gun cargo. You may not, you may not gun cargo at all. There, no, no gun cargo, no hail cargonia. Don't make cargonia. And it's weird to realize that I'm responsible for that term of affairs. Hell yeah. <laughs> which is, which is really weird. Um, all right, let me check my screens real quick, making sure this is on top so I can actually read chat. There we go. So here's what's weird in the Door Fortress. I have the settings turned on where it is multi-core threaded now, and it runs really good. The only odd thing is it has killed the soundtrack. There is no Door Fortress soundtrack <laughs> now. So you can have Door Fortress that runs good, or you can have Door Fortress that has a soundtrack. I, you know, I just, I don't, I don't get it. But yeah, um, for those of you who are curious, I have discussed this on the Patreon, uh, which is uh, patreon.com slash text. We've talked about on the Patreon how we are gathering lots and lots of glorious information and things for the Christmas dump, which has been one of those magical things we do every year. And yeah, uh, Christmas dump this year is going to celebrate Toys for Tots, and we're probably going to do the... Uh, the probably the final payday two uh, fundraiser uh, meth for kids or whatever we call it, which ends up getting us in trouble. But YouTube can never take it down because it's for charity. So they'll flag nice. it by saying meth for kids, which is what we're doing. We're raising money for Toys for Tots by making meth in a video game, but it's actually for a good cause. So it causes that orobos with YouTube that I like so well. So I'll let Chant decide. Do you want a Door Fortress soundtrack? Or do you want Door Fortress to run good? Your choice. I'll I'll Your be fine. I'll I'll set it either way. We'll see. And yeah, they better have meth cooking in payday three. I need to continue some traditions. I know early access went open today. There's some people in ch in uh, the BPL playing it. I've seen some of it, but there's not enough for me to make a a decision per se. You know. 
<laughs> Start the old Dwarf Fortress music in the background. I know there's like 10 hour loops somewhere. <laughs> yeah, the problem is, is it would be interspaced with ads because of how YouTube yep. is these days. So you'd be like, come on down to Chipotle to get a burrito the size of a baby. And you'd be Why like, I wouldn't get one. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Let's create a new world for chat. Uh, let's see. Medium, 100 years, medium, 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 medium. Uh, not everywhere, frequent. Now, let me show you what multi-core Dwarf Fortress looks like. You just go... I'm ready for this. Okay, because I've been experimenting to see exactly how far it goes. And it goes. So, here we go. Okay, and... <laughs> done? Oh my god, seriously? Yep. <laughs> This uh, this game runs real good uh, with the with the multi core spoofing thing they set up. So and uh, done. All right, history complete. Let's get in there. Yeah, history complete. So yeah, it's uh, future is now. The future is now. <laughs> people said we would never get a door fortress that ran this good, and people said, "Oh, multi core threading." And I had always said, "They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out." So it only took millions from Steam to motivate the move. I think it was just more people. Uh, yeah, it interested exposure enough. is everything. Yeah. Oh yes, it's it's one of those things where you'll find like there's a no name channel on YouTube, and then some React person who's huge like does a video on it, and then page one. It, yep. it just requires that one lucky break. So if you're out there waiting for your lucky break in life, don't give up. Skip that tutorial. We don't need that. We are on our own. Now, we're going to go look for a place that is all our own. And uh, you you can put on the Dwarf Fortress music on your end. Open a second tab and find your Dwarf. <laughs> you know what? You don't even have to do that. It's a good find, idea. Find Bardcore if you want. Bardcore is Bardcore. really interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, let's go. Hey, Bionic, Lord Nerd, Hat, all those people out there. All them peoples? Wow. So many peoples out there. Uh, all them people peoples. Mm -hmm. It's kind of funny, though. We end up getting... Ooh, the Forest of Ambers? Nice. The Continent of Combining, man. I mean, already we already have one amber. We don't need more ambers. There can be only one. I'm looking for a place that does not have a deep aquifer. Light aquifers, I'm fine with. Door Fortress is such a slam your penis in the car door game as is. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people who love watching people play Door Fortress. For the love of God, if you're going to watch somebody play Door Fortress, go watch Krug Smash. He makes this shit look easy and makes it really entertaining. He's the best there is. Really? You know what? Sure, Allah, let me turn on that. Oh, digs do five push-ups. I could drop and do five push-ups, but I mean... Do you want my now we're gonna or... we're we're gonna I'll do that I'll okay. do that. Okay, I'm just saying if you want me to do them, I'll do them. But do like... you want me to turn on name and game for people? Maybe if you would, if you feel like renaming dwarves, there's no. Oh, pressure. I'll I'll do it. I'll fucking okay. do it. But I'm gonna tell you this much: those fuckers are gonna die every time I run a fortress. We have... it is on everybody. Get your name and game going. <laughs> you're gonna have <laughs> now to. Go on. You're gonna have to start naming. You're gonna have to keep track. But remember when we did the Xenonauts and we were like, "Oh, redeem name and game," and we had people who got their name and they're like, "I'm finally in a thing." Dead. And he's gone. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> well, little Jimmy found out his head was not bulletproof. I like this forest. It, there's copper, lead, flexstone, iron, gold clay little soil that could be tricky but it's also untamed wilds which means i could run into like some fucking nightmare animals which i think is always fun so let's do an embark here and i'm gonna try to choose a tile that's got a little bit of everything so it's got a little bit of desert it's got a little bit of yeah oh it's very savage and dangerous it's just a stream so I have a profile called Some Guys, which is great because two miners, two woodworkers, two farmers, and a trader. Right? Simple as, very simple, very easy. Very Get the easy, stuff done. Easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. On you ain't them. taming no animals, but you're there. Yeah. So, oh wow. Okay. First one is drill, drill dip. Okay. Uh, drill dip. The jumped, the light, the storm, the glimmer, the aged. Uh, drill dip the brass <laughs> the drill dip the brass of organ excellent that's yes. the name of our yeah the coincidental welcome self. everybody to drill dip welcome to drill dip <laughs> sounds like something about to spit welcome to drill drip welcome to drill dip so you can I get you some corn dogs 
Uh, we're gonna go with uh, let's see, uh, the Sin Desert. God, that sounds like something from a really like Mork Borg, you know? Oh yeah. All right. Uh, this is a forest, so it can't be a desert. The slit. Wow. Wow. Uh, let's see. The frozen sunder, the frozen lean, the frozen fight, the frozen risk, the frozen, the frozen dirt. Excellent. That is our group name. All right. The symbol of the wire of throwing. We need a symbol for our group. Okay. I know how to do this. So we we just go find mm. the thing we need. Actually, let me type this in. It'll be easier. Ah, yeah. So elf, right? There's an image of an elf, right? Right? Yeah. Action, right. The the elf the elf is burnt. The elf is burning, right? Yeah. And then we go dwarf, right? <laughs> and then we go there's a dwarf. Image of an elf and a dwarf. The elf is yeah, okay. And then um elf is burning. Yeah, uh, the okay. The ex dwarf is contemplate the the dwarf. Oh uh, yeah. The dwarf is contemplating the elf. Action. Um Let's see. Where's laughing? Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, the the dwarf is laughing. So this is this is the description <laughs> of our group. It is an image of an elf and a dwarf. The elf is burning. The dwarf is contemplating the elf. The dwarf is laughing. History. So done. All right. I can't rename. The, I don't think I can name them yet. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. All right. What's our names? Hat. Hat's the miner. Hat, you're an 80-year-old yeah, sure. lady. Hat is the minor. Hat's an 80-year-old lady. So, uh, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm typing. It's not It's not accepting it. It's like, no. Oh. All right. Fuck it. I'll do it in game. I'll do it live. Wait, well, you right. got to click. Damn, that's so weird. Yeah. They always got to break something with multi-core, you know? Oh, yeah. It's probably <laughs> like, oh, well, you can only write on one core. And I'll be like, fuck it. Macaroni and fuck it. That's how we do this. Macaroni and fuck all right. Uh, a dwarven outpost, you have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Shorast Aros. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance, whether by bolt, plow, or hook. Provide for your dwarves. You're expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the wolves get hungry. Yep, drill dip of the brass organ. Strike the earth. Okay, so now let's see if I can rename a guy. Uh, Thank you, Maze. Hat. There. Yeah. Done. Yeah, there we go. Done. All right. All right. Hat. Next up is uh, Wiff well, or Wilf. W I L F. See, like it just says Hat. Hat Kivishmat. Easy. That's right. Hat Kivishmat. All right. Next one is who? Uh, it's Wilf. W I L F. Wilf, Wilf the Miner, 62 year old lady Wilf. Drink your insurer. All right, so there's Wilf. <laughs> uh, who else we got? Mer Emperor. Spell M E R R 3 M P E R O R. All right, got it. Done and done. 65 year old lady. So far, we are a quilting circle. Um, Hell yeah. All right, what do we well, got? That's a next? lot of old ladies. Yeah. Another 85-year-old lady. Excellent. Oh, my God. All right. We'll be uh, fine. This one's Maze. M-A-E-Z. Maze. You're an 85-year-old lady. Make your peace. Start quilting. All right. What else we got? Uh, ooh. Okay. There's Maze. We've got... Uh-huh. Okay. Got any more? Yep. We got... Oh, we're full. Like, we're good for the day. <laughs> okay. Um. So, uh, this one's Digiman. D-I-G-I-M-A-N. Digiman. Handled and handled. All right, Digiman. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, this one's Riff to the Raff. Riff? <laughs> number two or T? Yeah, number two. Uh, and then it's just one word, Riff to the Raff. <laughs> All right, done. Done and done. All right, and one more. Uh, the Trader. Uh, dogs and Cats. D-A-W-G-Z-K-A-T-Z. All right, done and done. It looks like our whole All fortress right. is a bunch of old ladies. But what the fuck is this? Malachite? Yes. Looks Ooh. looks like we are in a little kind of valley here, which is all right. I'm just trying to look around. Looks like we got some sandy clay and shit over there. That's useful. Got a lot of trees. Fuck elves. And then we're going to just go into the mountain. We're going to go into the mountain. Easy peasy. Thank you, Mr. Train. Thank you, Mr. Train. Hello. Tran. 
What was that? The the train of Cardor. The hawk. The train of Cardor. Um, <laughs> so step one is getting the fuck in the mountain, and step two is getting all the good stuff out of the mountain. I need to remove a ramp here. Uh, let's see. Yep. And then we just start removing these ramps because they are in the way, and I don't like that. I like a kind of a front of my fort that people can't dig into. And then I also need to get in. Don't show me this. I need to get in and make sure no one's fishing. Boo. Boo uh, fishing. Uh, uh, Done. Boo. We don't fish here. You know, I had a door fortress for it where everyone was fishermen, and it was great. Until someone died on the other side of a river. And then the dwarves saw all those things that the person had, right, on the other side of the river. And they went, <laughs> oh, well, no. I, need, I need to have those things. So they kept swimming across the other side of the river, and they kept drowning. So they kept seeing this growing pile of shit on the other side of the river. And they went, I want the, I want those things. I want those things on the other side of the river. And they kept going for that. 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 And eventually, we ended up with like three dwarves and a bunch of bodies in the river. And I went, <laughs> you know, whatever. I just accepted it. I was like, this is my fate. This is fine now. This is fine. All right. Let's see. We're gonna... I know that feeling all too well. Isn't it like... If they don't have good enough swim sp skill, they'll just fall in the river sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Then, then there was the time I decided to build what I thought was a really, really nice, and I do mean really nice little, uh, like waterfall for the dwarves. I thought, man, these dwarves are gonna enjoy the shit out of this waterfall. It's gonna be great. These, these, this waterfall <laughs> is gonna be fantastic. The dwarves are gonna be so fucking happy. It's a waterfall, you know. And so the waterfall was on the bottom of the fortress, and they entered through the top of the fortress. And so one of the trader caravans just, you know, decided that in the middle of their water, in, in, in the middle of leaving the map, they decided that it was a really good idea, and I do mean a really good idea, to... Thank you, Mr. Train. They decided it was a really good idea to exit over the edge of the waterfall. To go over the edge of the waterfall. To go over mm. the edge of it. So my dwarves are down at the bottom. And they are just celebrating. to die. <laughs> they are celebrating how wonderful this waterfall is. They are just absolutely happy as can be. They are like, oh my god, this waterfall is so nice. The mist just blows across your beard. It's so wonderful. And then the next thing that happens is this horse crashes down over the rocks and explodes on the stone train, like the stone um, oh. the stone stairs. Just... <laughs> and so then another horse came down and broke all of its legs and then was dragging itself around screaming and bleeding and puking. Oh my and God. my dwarves see that and they just freak the shit out. They're just like... <gasps> <laughs> and so I get this temper tantrum spiral that ends up destroying the whole fortress because I made a nice waterfall for these guys, you know, like a little happy thing. And that wasn't allowed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's things like Kess horse explosion. <laughs> that was bad. It was really bad. I was like, oh, this will be nice. Wrong. The first time I ever tried to build an upward fort, I found a nice three, like three fourths of the base was surrounded by like a, a shifting river. I was like, oh, cool. And it even has a little waterfall. That's nice. I'm building the walls just to like to prevent anything from coming through the river. And then I look back and I have like three dwarves left. And I look and they're at the bottom of the waterfall underneath the water dead. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what happened? I mean, a <laughs> apparently fishing... they tried to build a wall. I found a fishing hole that was like four water deep and then like six across. And it had fish in it. And I was like, oh, cool. I can just send the dwarves to fish there. It filled up with bodies. Mm-hmm. It was just... Yeah, train him how to swim. Yeah, I was just like, why? And I think a lot of people freaked out at the waterfall, but, I mean, my my sole issue with it is don't do anything nice. It's Door Fortress is one of those games that just reminds you best laid plans often go awry. You'll, you'll be sitting there going like, oh, I got this. No, you don't. Something's going to happen. There was... I mean, remember Cripple Bottoms? That story was so crazy in our community that Dwarf <laughs> wrote a song, or Goat wrote a song about it in Dwarvish mm -hmm. about Cripple Bottoms. Old fucking Cripple Bottoms. 
I'm just like, haunting Diggs and Diggs being fine with it. <laughs> yeah, because you were so jaded at everything else that had happened. Your guy was like, Whatever. Yeah, I kept trying to feed him and he just kept screaming and then he finally died. <laughs> well, Cripple Bottoms went up in a tree to pick fruit at the beginning of our play. Like he went up to pick fruit and that was all he wanted to do was just like go up and pick fruit. And that's that was fine for Cripple Bottoms. Cripple Bottoms was fine with that. Everything was cool. Things were nice. And then, you know, the issue was that Cripple Bottoms fell out of the tree, right? And and he broke his legs. And we had no crutches or anything. And none of the dwarves wanted to help him. They would bring him water, but they would not actually help him. Like, they just went, yeah. And you're like, please, please, please work. F- please help this man. Like, would you mind... Would you mind helping this man, please? And they were like, eh, I don't know. I mean, I got to go fishing. I got to build a cabinet. And I, you know, I saw a nice butterfly. That was nice. And you're like, this guy is just laying on the lawn with legs built like fucking pretzels, you know, just just bent and fucked up. But all, all the legs just crossed every which way. And he's just laying there out front screaming. That is all he is doing is screaming. All he is doing is screaming and howling with fucked up legs. Just like, my legs are ruined. And and everyone just walked by him. And occasionally they would bring him water. So he laid out front for two caravans, which means two years this man just laid out on the lawn, just screaming, and everyone just walked by, and they're like, "Oh, hey, what's up, Cripple Bottoms?" And he's just like, "Ah, ah!" And then I realized some real shit happened because it said Cripple Bottoms stands up in the little chat log, and I was like, "What? Cripple Bottoms stands up? He stood up because he lost his shit. He lost his mind, and in crazy dwarf mode, he stood up." And walked on his broken legs off into the wilderness. And we never saw him again. <laughs> Until his ghost started haunting the fortress. But didn't haunt everyone. Like all the people who had come by to help him. <laughs> or all the people who had just kept him alive. No. Only haunted Diggs. And Diggs's character was like, that's fine. It's alright. It's not a big deal. Who cares? Just lonely. Yeah, just like... Whatever. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, Cripple Bottom stands up was like a moment of, uh oh. <laughs> it's like the boss battle second phase. That was, yeah, it's like Mana Bar shows up and the, <laughs> the, the Final Fantasy music starts. That was, that was some shit. That was some real shit. Cripple Bottoms was, was one of those stories in Dwarf Fortress where I'm just like, I'm alarmed. I'm actually frightened. Oh, oh, alert. Oh, no, something has collapsed on the surface. Where? Oh, is it a tree? Fuck trees. Yeah. So some of the sound alerts are working, but not the music, which is odd. I'm telling you, it's Cripple Bottoms is one of those things that will haunt me in Dwarf Fortress. That and the the Magma Shoes story. That, <laughs> that one was like, well... I had a dwarf that ran over to a volcano because there was a goblin that was next to the volcano and fell close to the volcano and then burst into flames by the volcano, right? Just mm-hmm. perished, instantly dead. Fucking fucking goblin blasted. Bad times for that guy. Like he was he was absolutely blown away. And so I'm going like, "Wow, that's fucked up." But one of the dwarves sees these shoes. And goes, man, I could use them shoes. And decides, you know, to to go ahead and have them. Just decides, you know what I could use? I could use those shoes. So he goes over to these shoes. Now, these shoes are on fire. Oh. You know, and so he puts the shoes on. And is walking around and his thoughts are like, I am on fire. Like freaking out. But... I found these great shoes. I have a positive thought from seeing good shoes today. So he would not get rid of the shoes. He burns to death from shoes. And then after burning to death from shoes, 
he sits there and he thinks to himself, man, those are great shoes. Now, other dwarves see the burning shoes and they go, I too desire these shoes. And one after one, I have these fortress, this whole fortress starts emptying because dwarves desire the shoes, which are not burning for some reason, but still on fire, and proceed to try to have them. So I, I depopulated a fort because of shoes. I do not have good luck in Dwarf Fortress. I will do stuff no. and be like, oh, that's neat. Wrong. It is not neat. It was instead bad. It's, it's kind of hit or miss every time I play. Either either I have a very long kind of, you know, eventless stint where I get everything stable and build, like, cool monuments. And then some games I'm, like, half a year in and it's Goblin Invasion. <laughs> it's like, I'm not ready to fight and I just watch everyone die. Uh, I had a fort where I made a bunch of gold coins and I made so many... Oh, God. Bola Unit says, that's a tale to Harrow's men's souls. Oof. So one of the one of the issues I had that was that was really bad uh, was I built a fort where I had like gold coins and gold coins in Dwarf Fortress are actually really great because you can just trade the shit out of them with everyone and this is pre Steam Dwarf Fortress, but I was sitting there having a good old time. I got all my you know shoes and everything's all right and oh hey Snork you know, hey Snork and. It's the- we, we got so many things going well in our fortress. Happy, happy times, right? Happy, happy times. times. Perfectly happy times. So I thought. So I thought. I think everything's fine and dandy like cotton candy. And then we make so many gold coins and export so many gold coins that it turns out it's not it's not fine and dandy like cotton candy. In fact, it's horrific. And the reason the reason it's horrific very simply, rather rather simply put, is we we end up attracting a dragon, <laughs> and it just shows up, and without like so much as a thought, just goes cool shit and burns it all down. And I mean, I I was like, this is a golden age, and then fire, and I was like, oh, that thing ran to every room in the house and to find every dwarven child to burn them. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where I realize in Dwarf Fortress you're very lucky to have anything. It's a good game that I think that kids should play because it'll it'll let you know that you know life ain't fair. Dwarf Fortress is a really good game for that. You'll be sitting there going like, "Oh, maybe I could have these things happen. Maybe your house burns down. You never know. You never know." Dwarf Fortress does that very well. All right, so I'm gonna get these dwarves to do their fucking job. Maybe. I'm going to make sure the miners are only doing mining because that is absolutely critical that they stick to their skill set. Uh, because why? No, you need to also be a woodcutter. Why are you not a woodcutter, son of a bitch? I am really hoping in time, hello, Mr. Train, I'm really hoping in time that I end up getting um, Dwarf Therapist built into this so I can change Dude. all their... Yeah, and I think that's just a matter of time if it hasn't already happened and I'm just gleefully unaware of it. I do know that their the DF hack was updated a long time ago to work with the Steam version, but I haven't been keeping up with the with everything else that's tied to it. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where I I love Dwarf Fortress, but I don't keep up with it as much as I should, and that's normal. I think this is going to be our trade goods area, hidden in the back, our trade goods. Or we it's can a lot of things come goods. out of nowhere, t- like some parts of the year. It's just like, oh, here's ten new things to distract you. Then there's a couple months a year where you're just like, I just want to play Dwarf Fortress. Well, the issue I have with new games frequently is I played all of. Probably an hour of Starfield, about. And people say, what is it like? Is this good or is this bad? And I'm like, I'm not a fucking game reviewer, but it needs time. It has a lot of promise. It's, you know, like any Bethesda game, it's going to end up modded to shit. And that's the game Mm -hmm. you end up playing is the one that's modded to shit. So, you know, give it time for the mods to show up and quality of life and all that good stuff. But I, I know that a lot of people have been sinking a lot of hours into uh, 
into it, yeah. Yeah, and a lot if it's their jam, that's they're into it. Sure, sure. It's it's like people who are diehard into Elder Scrolls games. Like yeah. Elder Scrolls games to me have never been the be all end all of RPGs. They in fact I would say that Elder Scrolls games based on just time I've put into RPGs wouldn't even make my top ten. And that's because I like different stuff. Uh, I like Fallout. And I I think that Starfield is an okay game. I think aesthetically it's interesting because it's like NASA punk is the term they're using. And I think that's really cool oh. as an idea. But I also have just been like, it's an okay game. And I find a lot of people out there have gone out of their ways to try to say it is the best or it is the worst. And I'm like, what about a third option saying... It's a game. Some people enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's a weird one for some people to wrap their heads around. I know. It's like, did you know this sucks? I'm like, oh, cool. And it's like, hey, stop having fun with that game. Uh huh. Yeah. It's, <laughs> well, I, there's a reason why I come back to old games I like. I've put more hours into Tour Fortress and Space Station 13 than probably everything else combined. That doesn't mean I'm good at them. It just means that's where. I keep coming back because I always get something new out of it. And I think that, you know, it's, it's one of those things where when it comes down to games, most games are okay. They're, they're all right. You know, they, they probably yeah. could use more work and modern big release games typically to be un they're typically unfinished for the first dozen years. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, it took probably mm -hmm. what five years for Skyrim to get all the crazy ass mods it needed. Well, that, that's what I was going to say. At least they didn't approach Starfield the same way that it was 76. Like, if it was an always online type of situation that didn't support the modern community as well as it should, this game would probably not last. Like, it would be out of people's minds in a bit. But, like, day one, they were already coming up with the, the, the mod scene was already exploding. Yeah. So we know it's moddable. Well, now we're just waiting for the big community patch, I guess. I just don't understand as well the the like crazy hate and love cycle of a lot of space games because I love space games. I'm a spaceman. Hail Cargonia, right? I'm I'm a spaceman. But if if anyone asks me like what games would you say define your channel or what would you say defines you if you had to go out in history for playing anything? as a creator, which I doubt that would ever make me historically relevant, I would say Space Station 13, before Battletech or before anything else. I'm a spaceman, first and foremost. And I understand space games are fun because space is cool. And yeah. it's one of those things that no matter how fucking good you are, no matter how fucking smart you are, no matter how fucking talented you are, if everyone in chat applied to be an astronaut, they would say no to every one of us because it's really hard to do that. So that's why space games are cool because you can be a spaceman without having to apply to NASA. And that's that's really nice. That's that's cool escapism. That's why I love games like Traveler. I love I love yeah. Traveler a lot because it's space but cool. It's casual space. It's like 1970s. Everyone's got big hair and chain smokes in the bar in space. It's Space Station 13 the game. I think that's. I do find it really interesting that you can go from one planet that has like floating helipads and teleporters to one that's essentially like the tech level of a Midwest town that has a drilling rig. Like, yeah, it, well, that's that's something that 40k ripped off. Traveler's been around since '77, and a lot of people are like, "Oh wow, look at all these worlds with different technology levels." And I'm like, "Traveler started that, where you can be like, well, now that I've got my fusion cannon, I'm gonna go to Wild West world, and we're gonna have a posse roundup and be cowboys." <laughs> <laughs> I, and that's the fun of good RPGs. Good RPGs, like, peel back the possibilities of you. You know, they let you do whatever. That's why I know a lot of people go, oh, D&D &D is basic. And I'm like, yeah, but D&D &D lets you do anything. You, you could say, oh, in, like, one of the best D&D &D modules of all time is Journey to Barrier Peaks, which is exploring a crashed UFO. <laughs> and because of how it's described to the players... They won't know it's a UFO. It's like you find this very white, smooth surface room with strange chairs seemingly bolted to the floor made of the same material and these big, flat, seemingly stained glass consoles around the room. And you're like, oh, is this some wizard's tower? Is this a pocket dimension? No, it's a spaceship control center. 
You've crashed in a UFO. You've found a crashed UFO. That's amazing stuff. And travelers much it's, of the same it's way. It's Spelljammer with technology. <laughs> I never really liked Spelljammer. I played a lot of it. Um, I had a I group. Played it, I attempted once and I didn't get far. I found that Spelljammer is one of those things where you're like, that sounds cool. But if I wanted to experience Spelljammer, like Spelljammer sounds like something that should be on the side of a van. You know what I mean? Like as van <laughs> art, you know, like yeah, painted. Wizard. Yeah, there's like a wizard riding a nautiloid shooting a cannon at a space hippo. You're like, oh, cool. It's like an acid <laughs> dream. But as far as like RPGs go, Spelljammer was always just fell, fell short. But when it comes to Traveler, my God, talk about a setting where you can do hilarious things. Because Traveler is one of these settings that had the whole giant galaxy-spanning Imperium idea long before many other settings came up with that. And it draws a lot from even older science fiction. Mark Miller himself says, I, I borrowed a lot from older science fiction, so stuff like Foundation as a setting, where there is a galaxy-spanning Imperium. And what's great in Traveler, for those of you guys who don't know, in Traveler, the Imperium does not care what you do because, unless you fuck with the Imperium. So in like 40K where the Imperium's like, don't talk to aliens, don't do this, xenophobia, blah, blah, blah. These are all the rules. Traveler's like, hey, don't fuck with the mail and don't fuck with the Imperial business. And you're like, well, what if I go to this planet and sell everyone cocaine and nuclear warheads? And they're like, well, that's between you and them. And you're like, oh. As long as those can't come back to us. Yeah, they're just like, hey, now if that fucks up Imperial business, you're in trouble. So it's, it's, it's one of those reasons I love Traveler because... You can have a planet of space Vikings. You can have a planet of cowboys. You can have a planet of ninja Ronin fighting, you know, Bushido stuff. You can do all that in Traveler very easily. <laughs> also, there's like 10 editions of it, which is quite nice. You can just choose whichever one you want. And most of them are still in print. Still know the difference between Stars Without Numbers and Traveler 2nd Edition. Stars Without Number is just kind of a generic um, RPG. I like it. But it, I've only ever played one game of it, and I've not seen regular DMs for it. Um, I know Starfinder, the, the Pathfinder in space, Space yeah. Finder, has, has kind of a following, but that's kind of also generic y, so you can write your own whatever happened. Yeah. Which is fine. Um, I'm more a homebrew guy. Like the Magistrata Mundanus was all homebrew. Um, like, so good. Well, none of that was in 40K. Like, there's one tenth of things in 40K was in the Magistrata Mundanus, and it's still the most popular thing on the podcast. And I'm like, good <laughs> God, why? I think between the Magistrata Mundanus episodes, there's like a million listeners. Woo! Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh. Tex visited yeah. and we made him honorary Huskarl for beating a challenger with a pair of clogs. Well, thank you. I, you have to beat someone with shoes. It's, 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 it's how you earn powers. But no, the um, I, I like a lot of different settings. I'm hoping that uh, I want to get Death in Space. I'm looking very much forward to Cyborg. Because Morkborg felt like nothing matters and why even play the game. Pretty much. Yeah, it was just like, oh man. Like, it's cool to be the guys who are on the cover of a metal album, right? But it's not a cool full-time job. So you go to a planet or you, you go to a city and it's like everyone here sucks and everyone's poor. And you're like, man, it's just like real life. <laughs> I need some escapism, man. All right, let's see. Ooh, we got limestone blocks. Yeah, we're going to make a paved road. We're going to pave things. Oh, man. I like, but I like Traveler. If you ever just want to do crazy, crazy, crazy adventures in space, Traveler is your boy. Traveler is a great fucking setting. And you know what else is really, really exciting is um, mm. we are getting the Traveler RPG on the podcast. Uh, Mike's working Ooh. on it right now. We have a, we do have an oopsie. Um, Episode one was not recorded. I accidentally only recorded my end, so you can hear me saying random shit, and it that doesn't help. Oh no! And then uh, Mike's end recorded nothing, so we'll have to basically go from DM notes and explain the setup for the game. But everything else has been reco recorded, so it should be fine. 
Yeah, it, it'll be good enough. Oh, it's going to be stupid. I, I still think that is probably one of the best stupid adventures because I don't think it's ruining anything to say that through accidents and fuck-ups, we never met the big bad evil guy um, until the very end. Um, yep. Yeah, we we didn't find the guy until the very, very end. So he comes out like a Bond villain and we're like, who the fuck are you? And he's like, I am the Alpha and the Omega. And we're like, you might have remembered me from two and a half years ago when I had a small disposition in the beginning and then you walked the other direction. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we were like, peace out. And we just went the other way. We also found a nuke. We've done... We... It was a antimatter bomb. You will hear the Very phrase. Very much a nuke. <laughs> you will hear the phrase in this let's play. I shit you not. This this sorry no actual play is the term for yep. you know um for the for the uh, term of an RPG. But you hear the actual play of it. Uh, we use the term Osama bin Dolphin, unironically, and it goes downhill from there. It we and have the, and <laughs> you also hear dehydrated space whale. We tr yeah yeah <laughs> we 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 are not good spacemen. Um, we all played a really fun group of people. Um, I I think we had a good time. It was great. Yeah, Trav. Uh oh, migrants have arrived. So now we can name more people. Hopefully, I get. Ooh. Yeah. So give me a second to get the new migrants in, and that's one no bonus problem. to actually naming people in Dwarf Fortress because then you can find out who's new. And then assign them jobs. We are not. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't really like to point out the newest people in your place. Oh, it will. It will. It typically in my fortress is like when I have dwarf therapist open. Uh, when I'm playing non steam dwarf ward, which I've stopped doing because multi core has made my life so nice because everything's just moving so quickly. Um, one of the things that I think is really really fun is I create roles and i'll just be like dumb labor guy and i just name that as a guy's job and yeah it's it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty nice you end up with a a lot of really really easy ways to find people all right so we're gonna have a road laid out and we're gonna do some stuff multi-core for the win multi-core is nice I, but yeah, we're going to build a happy, happy little floor and then we're going to build a trade depot out here. And then I'm probably going to build like a nice little wall with like a drawbridge so we can let people in and out of our happy little fort. And that's, <laughs> that's, it's going to, it's going to be a happy little fort made of happy little dwarves. We have more than enough drink and plants and meat and food for now, but I know that's going to change. I know that's going to change badly. All right. So we got some new dwarfs. Thank let's, you. let's go through and see what we got. Okay, we got a glass maker and a leather worker. So I, I have, hope we'll, uh, we'll have to post the actual art of the the Osama bin Dolphin after those episodes are dropped. What I intend to do on the website, and since uh, Dots or Snork is uh, here, uh, he can kind of hear the idea. I want to have a page for the Magistrato Mundanus, where as links in the podcast, the Magistrato Mundanus episodes plus the art. Plus, once I get it finished, the Magistrato Mundanus police manual. Because I gave you all in-game the actual police manual to do your jobs. Yeah, you did. And um, I think only Goat read it. Yeah, nobody else <laughs> read it. Because everyone else's character is like, rules. <laughs> I'm, I'm not reading some low gothic stuff. It can't be that important. <laughs> yeah, Diggs' character is like a really highborn dude. So when it came down to, like, you know, reading stuff, he was like, Nah, I don't think so. So <laughs> someone does that for me. <laughs> yeah, I I have help. And Ricky couldn't read. And yeah, so Greg Lack couldn't read either. <laughs> Greg Lack, son of Greg Lack. Uh who yeah, he, he couldn't read. So we're gonna put the uh magist I wanna make a whole page for the Magistrat of Mundanus. And if you haven't listened to You should to link him, back to our character sheets if we can remake or recover them. Yeah, we probably can. Um and what we could do is I was going to give people uh, on the website the police manual for the Magistrata Mundanus that says, here's how to run this game if you want to run it with your players in Dark Heresy. But I found an easier way to run it. You don't even have to use Dark Heresy. I found a better system for running this game. What is it? Delta Green. 
Hell yeah. Delta Green runs it a lot better than Dark Heresy could. And I was like, oh my god, why didn't I do that? That would have been so simple. It would have been. Yeah, it's... It, what's funny is you guys were probably better cops, though, than 90% of the cops in 40K. So but we in, fall forward successfully. Other cops in 40K just die in the fight. Okay, let me give you guys a tip. If you have not listened to the Magistrata Mundanus, which is on the BPL podcast... Uh, just look up Magistrata Mundanus BPL podcast in Google and go to the f- episode one, Griglack Fly Real Bird. And when you get to these characters, you realize none of them are cops and they're all incredibly <laughs> stupid in their own way. And that was the whole concept of the game is a bunch of people who are not police are told to go be police officers. And it was great. So we need to rename some people. Uh, we have a bowyer who's going to be cutting stuff. So what? what's our next right. name? First at the top is the Bionic Babe. The Bionic Babe, who is a 25-year-old man with two lovers. Well done. Perfect. Well Perfect. done. Each lover is awesome. <laughs> you are a bowyer and a planter. And um, it says, unmet need. You need to pray to this unpronounceable God that runs off the page. So not doing that. Let's see. Uh, who's next? The Weaponsmith. So this guy's name is barely human, but it's like pear instead of bear. What? Like B. It's like pear with a B and then Lee human. Barely like that? Like P. It's yeah. I'll say B A E R L Y human. <laughs> okay. Got it. Two lovers, two children. Poor social awareness, frail and poor memory, which is exactly why you're a weaponsmith, soaper and planner. Wow. The characters, <laughs> the characters quote here says adequate weaponsmith, but building friendships is a waste. There is no bond that can withstand the distance or a change of circumstance. Wow. Wow. That's really, really grim. How very <laughs> post COVID of you. Um, all right. So let's see. Glassmaker. Not for long. All right. All right, this guy, it just, I've never seen his name before, but the name is House6153. 6153. Send fire. Good. Grid ref. Wait for a splash. All right, so we got House6153. Uh, got a leather worker, not for long. What is the name? This one's Silicone Soul. Silicon soul. Is that what happens when somebody gets too many boob jobs? They're like, she has a silicon soul. That sounds like something out of cyberpunk. Wow. Yeah, I'm about to say that's that. I feel like that would be either be a compliment or an insult in cyberpunk. That does. It sounds like a cool count. Yeah, we I would, wouldn't mess with that girl chick. She has a silicone soul. That's like <laughs> someone who's so fake. They're like transhuman. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. The transhuman. Give up their movement. soul for the robot. Oh, that's cool. I like because you know cyberpsychosis is not always a mental violent break. It might just be complete detachment from my like, human area values. And that's so she's like I wouldn't work with her. She has a silicone soul. That's a nice awesome. way to say she's a cyberpsycho. That's nice. But yeah, the Magistrat of Mundanus is pretty dumb, and I want to make a page for the Magistrat of Mundanus to include the art Eldonius did, which is hilarious. Ooh, um, so good. Yeah, the the art Eldonius did. Plus, we could probably put people's character sheets and then show people the manual uh, that we did because the manual is hilarious. If you don't know how to be a cop and you read the Magistrato Mundanus manual, you can fake being a cop. Depp helped me write it. So it has yeah. police procedures in it. It says how to use a radio, how to call in a crime, how to, you know, take information, how to, like, organize a crime scene. It has all those procedures in there. And it allows you to follow along. So anyone who wants to run a game in that setting will be able to. It's really a good manual. I, I, we really did read through it, but our characters solely did not read through it. Well, yeah, your characters um, had their own problems. Like, your guy was on the run and was, yeah, I don't want to ruin it, but your guy was basically wanted. Everyone was running from something. Depp's character was the only one who was like, this is nice. I enjoy this. Is this is much better than where he is. Yeah. So the basic concept for people who aren't familiar is that all of the characters start off with no oh, knowledge shit. of why they're there. And the only limitation I said is no one can be a cop. No one, no one yeah, can. we're not allowed to be any kind of law enforcement. 
<laughs> and so as they get to the planet that they're going to, because they're all going to a new planet because they need a fresh start for various reasons. And that's very common in 40K. It's like, oh, your old planet burned down or there was a labor lottery or your planet was clogged full of people. And they were like, guess what? It's moving day. So everyone, everyone goes and does their thing. And everyone goes and has to, you know, um, <laughs> everyone goes out and has to do their thing and go be cops, which, which is not great because they're like, well, I'm not a cop. And they're like, the paperwork says you are. And oh so <laughs> everyone suddenly is in this position where they're cops and you're like, well, how bad could it be? Well, the answer is quite bad uh, because Diggs's character is from a planet of criminals. You are from basically crime planet. Yep. Because we, because we're like, okay, I'm gonna be. We rolled for all of my character stuff, by the way. If you, we did an interview after the podcast was done, yeah, uh, well, that you can listen to. It, I've got questions, but yeah, we rolled for it, and I ended up being like a psyker, noble-born crime, and I'm like, cool. My whole plan is just a whole bunch of people in tuxedos trying to shake each other down. Yeah, it's mafia <laughs> planet, and he's like a noble-born son who is a psyker. And the family sent him away like, oh, we don't want people to kill you. You're like the hidden scion of our house. And so Diggs's character is away. Uh, Rich City probably just got on the wrong ship. <laughs> He's um, like, I was trying to go down for some smokes. Why yeah. are we leaving the planet? <laughs> yeah, he, he was like, oh, is this where the smokes are? And they're like, get in the ship. And so he gets in the ship. And yeah, so Mike's character is more because we basically did what you're supposed to do in the older versions of Dark Heresy. And a lot of people got away from that because I think a lot of people play 40K and they want to be these epic, powerful characters that have these epic, powerful stories where everyone dies epically. And I'm like, right, but this isn't that kind of story. So I said, would you guys mind doing the old rolled method where you roll randomly where you're from? You roll randomly for you know a lot of stuff. And what that allowed you guys to do was just embrace these accidental characters. So Depp makes a character who is a Death Corps of Krieg cavalry officer <laughs> who is a cop, which is hilarious because when he's given an objective, very literal following of the objective. So it's just like, there will be no crime, you know, and just stabs people. <laughs> um, you end up with, there was that one part I remember where they had that guy and he goes, are you armed? And the guy said no. And he goes, shame, and just pushes the sword through him. <laughs> just oh. very slowly <laughs> um yeah like war crimes uh mike's character mike wanted to make a guy who was basically max Payne, like two guns dive through the dive through opening doors shooting everybody made a character with all of those gunslinging skills that could just blow everyone away <laughs> but the character was really dumb and couldn't read. So he ended up making tr Ricky from trailer park boys, but with gunfighting skills like Max Payne. So yep. go in there and mispronounce lots of dives. Yeah. Lots of dives, like doing Kirk rolls and stuff and gunfights. He's screaming getting... incorrect phrases. At yeah. He's <laughs> is, is like in the name of the interior, give up the dope, you know, and just stealing <laughs> drugs from everybody and shaking people down. That was really good. Um, we ended up with, uh, we had Goat's character, Uriah, Uriah Hobson, who was the, uh, adept and he was just like a paper pusher. And so all he would say is, um, yeah, it was, you know, uh, snoring. He did the, he literally did all of the Rickyisms. Like he did the Rickyisms throughout the whole thing. Like it was, it was bad. It's dedicated. Yeah, he was like, "Don't worry, I get friends with the Benedicts," and we were just like dying laughing. Um, you had Uriah Hobson, who was just a paper pusher. Who was just like, "Well, the paper says we can't hurt people," and they're like, "No, it doesn't. It says don't use excessive force." And then they were like, "Well, who determines that?" And they're like, "The Krieger. He's the sergeant." <laughs> So everything became okay. It was like, well, they have guns, so we have to use guns. And then they get the auto cannon. Um, you had uh, Mattis Guardian, who played Griglack, son of Griglack, who is a feral worlder, who is like a Conan <laughs> character, who just went around and just smashed things apart. And they they would like give him, 
you know, like, hey, here's our stun baton. You can have this. And he's like, ooh, magic sword, you know, and <laughs> like beats people's heads off. It was it was a good cast of characters and it ended up just being absolutely bonkers. Yeah, Primark Pizza is probably one of the best things ever. Uh, there that... were so many gold moments, but that thing, like, I was just standing outside invisible going, holy shit. <laughs> There was the Primark pizza. There was the rave that you guys uh, raided. That was great. Um, there was the shoe. Oh, yeah. That... Walk... Oh, I don't want to spoil anything. But yeah, that was a there was a sudden exit strategy on that one. Um, there was the shootout at Battle of the Bands. There was the bread store shootout, where the you you guys were like, hey, we, well... it fed us for months. <laughs> yeah, the bread store shootout. Um, there was. The most infamous episode is the Hole in the Watershed District. Where that's a that's a big one. You guys, I wrote this whole huge thing about how to, you know, like I, I'm a huge fan of the older Medal of Honor games because you have Michael Giacono for the soundtrack, who's an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, soundtrack artist who did a lot of the older PlayStation games. Amazing, amazing, amazing cinematic uh, artist. And he did the, all these amazing soundtracks for um, Medal of Honor. And I like my favorites are like Fort Schmerzen. And, oh mm -hmm. man, such a great fucking soundtrack. And he ends up um, inspiring me. I'm like, what if, what if I had these guys go do a tunnel fight? And I had all this music set up. And you guys opted not to do the tunnel fight in the most explosive way possible. And it just, like, ruined the whole thing I had planned. But I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's roll some dice. And then it got catastrophic. Uh, this guy, uh, Bolo, says, the moment Quintus realized that Ricky was the apex predator of any high world was priceless. <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, every situation where I look at this guy and think he's nothing more than, like, just some dude. He'd pull off some crazy ass role where we just bypass like a whole guard post or we'd walk past like an issue. And my guy was like, How does how does that work? How are you communicating with these people? He's he's like, ain't no thing. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Ricky was he was uh ridiculous. And you guys uh oh, alert. Oh, Weaponsmith uh -oh. has been found dead. Barely human. You are dead. Oh, he did. Dude, Barely Human called it the moment you named him. He's like, I'm going to die. All right, let's see. Uh, I'm wondering what killed him. Uh, let's see. Holy shit. Oh, he was fighting a paragon and a giant wombat and a rooster child. Oh, my God. So he got torn apart by wildlife. Um, not great. Not great. But you called it. Barely. If, you, barely, if you're out there, I'm sorry, but you did call it. You jinxed yourself. Yeah, and the bird whistle was pretty bad. Okay, let's see. What do I need? I need seeds. I'm going to need seeds, and I'm going to probably need some drinks. Fancy drinks and seeds and cheeses are definitely what I want for my dwarf fort. Oh, yeah. Look, he got he got murdered, but he also uh, looks like he murdered one of the critters that got him. There's part of Did his. He arm... fight is that was that your own like your own animals or was that randoms like wild? No, I guess the chicken person's wild. No, this is definitely wild animal nonsense. So I'm gonna oh, need man. to go and check. Pets, others. Okay, agitated peregrine falcon. Those things are what really tore into him so he got attacked by a bird right as we were talking about the whistle so yeah ripperoni and cheese and what was weird is like i had not intended for that game to turn out to be a comedy at all i had not intended at all for that game to be a comedy i'd intended on purpose for it to be i told you guys like i'm a huge fan of elroy's la quintet i'm a huge fan of you know la noir i'm a huge fan of true crime stuff i was thinking man we could do all these really neat stories um in the 40k universe using a bit of true crime novels and all this other neat shit and as it turned out, um, it turned into like the Naked Gun, you know, that series. It, it just got really, <laughs> really dumb really fast. And instead of like, you know, getting butt hurt as many DMs would, I was just like, this is too funny. We need to, we need to do this. 
This needs to be part of the game now. I'm going to also need to build a room for our honored hero corpses so they can be properly venerated. So I'm going to build a little tomb room. And I will, I will take the stinking corpse that is laying out in the sun. And I will, I will let... I will let the dwarves deal with that, but we're going to have to build some good stuff. And yeah, right there is the Black Pants Legion Auxiliary Discord. If you guys want to find a cool community that is pretty fun, where dumb stuff happens on the regular, and people have made a lot of good friends, I mean, I'm still surprised people write me almost daily and say, I've met my new best friend here. That's kind of nice in an age of bullshit. So yeah, if you want to, if you want to join a fun Discord, there's a place. It's the auxiliary discord. It's the public facing part of the BPL. It's full of crazy. All right, let's put... Canium.org goes to BPL too? Uh, oh, yes. I see that. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to create... Because the idea with our website... Because a lot of people try to build websites to like say, oh, I'm the best creator in the world and you should love my stuff and buy my merch. What we're doing with a website instead is neat stuff like, hey, we're a bunch of weirdos and we're all banding together because we don't like how the internet's just kind of bullshitty. And we just want to make something good that lifts everyone up. So we're going to have a page for our artists. We're going to have a page for our musicians. We're going to have a page for like Eldonius to show off all of his art portfolio and his store and his pages of really cool stuff because... We work with so, so cool. well. We work with so many amazing people, and I think that the world needs more of that. The world needs more of that positivity, you know. I yeah, guess. yeah. And you guys promised you'd link back. Hat, we'll get to it. Yell at the internet We're people. There. We're getting there. Three. It's a work in progress. Like my life. I, I had to remind Lichter today to please answer the question that was posted on the website to help me. Cause I, days ago, you were like, hey, what's the traffic look like? And I, I caught Lichter in the channel. I'm like, hey, how's that what traffic? It's like, oh, it's on the website. You can go look. I'm like, I'm not looking. Can you answer the question? And <laughs> Yeah, it's also easy to get distracted with everything else going on. Oh, he's he's a very busy guy, but I was glad he was able to, like, he, if he could stop for a moment to say, hey, no, he's, I can ask he him. He knows his that. stuff. He knows his stuff. I, I like when he built the website, I was like, this looks better than professional websites. And we are not professionals. There's yeah. a whole bunch of fun hiding thing, like fun little things on the website already. We're going to hide the way into the black pants Legion on there. Oh, you heard it here first folks. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to, Oh, oh, we got more migrants we, uh, victims. Oh, Victim. yeah, oh, just some no. victims. oh man. Everyone has well, been chosen to have a good time. Stand by, we're going to name them. We have the names, we have the numbers. Some migrants have arrived. Very well. Um, let's go through the list. Let's see. Oh, cool, a paper maker and all these other dumb jobs? No, no, you're going to be a stone cutter and an engraver like your father. Oh, your, your father. Your father. You're going to join a... the stone crafters union? You're going to make them so happy. Uh, sounds like my mom. <laughs> Why don't you do anything with your friends? I'm like, which friends? I have plenty of friends. And they're like, the ones from high school. And I'm like, oh my God. I was like, I think some, if not most of them are dead. She's like, how would you know? All right. So let's see. Who do we got? <laughs> uh, woodcutter. Uh, no, no, no. Yes. One woodcutter. All right. Let's rename a motherfucker. Here we go. Uh, this guy is Quinlist, Q-U-I-N-L-I-S-T. Done and done. I was out in the rain. That makes me so grouchy. Wow, what He's a... He's so grouchy. Quinlist, so grouchy. So grouchy, grouchy bastard. All right, let's see. Quinlist. Right. Uh, Next we... on the oh, list. Oh, another miner because the first one died. All right. Oh, this is this mixes then. This one's called Scarab Nate. Scarab Nate. All right, cool. All right, let's see what else. Do 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 do. Uh, Lorban Stuconda cost. All right, let's do it. Uh, this is Lucky Omen. Lucky Omen. He's totally not gonna die. <laughs> All right, Lucky Omen Stuconda cost. All right, let's see next. Uh, Lord Nerd. Lord Nerd. Done and done. All right, let's see. 
Lord Nerd, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they got another one. All right, what are we doing here? This one's Dots or Snork Stalker, whichever one you dots, like to do. Snork. I put a slash in there. <laughs> Mood. Everything's all right. All right. All right, let's see. That's great. Uh, oh, Fisherdorf, not for long. Name? Uh, Sir, S E R, Shagio. S H A G G I O. Sir so Shagio. Got it. Uh, got another one. Here we go. This one's Lord Grimos. Grimos. Mame. Grimos. Grimos. All right, let's see. And yeah, that's all of them. Until we get more victims. We're going to need to start making drinks here shortly. Haven't had to even in the first <laughs> year. Not trading because we have nothing to trade. We are back. I'm going to get more water. I just finished it off with that water break. I have been drinking water throughout. I'm a good boy. I drink O2. Oh, man. But don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Now, what I'm going to point out to you guys is, uh, yep, they're going to leave soon. That's fine. And that guy died outside. That's that's what happens in Dwarf Fortress, you know? Sometimes you die. you got to know when to hold him and know when to get pecked to death by a peregrine falcon. Not a catchy song, I admit. But look, we're smoothing all the floors, which I probably shouldn't have done first, which is a kind of a mistake, but that's that's okay. We're getting there. We're going to turn all this hematite and shit into good stuff, and we're slowly going to build up our industries. Um, yeah, if you don't go outside, you won't die. Simple as, as Chippy would say. Simple as. You don't need to overthink this. Don't go outside. Only the dead people go outside. Like that guy. That guy is dead. We're going to need to make a tomb for him. It's not going to be a great tomb, knowing these dwarves. It's it's going to be, like, made out of lies. All right, let's see. Um, ooh, ooh, I need to work on... Hmm. How do I expand the farm plot? Or do I have to make a new one at the back? That's a good question. All right, let's get into uh, workshops, farming, farm plot. And then I just go do 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 Cool. I've got a secondary farm plot in the back. Wait, did I actually do that? Did I tell them to make a farm plot? There. Yes. So I have a small farm plot in the back that'll grow different things. Your dwarf has not died yet. Don't worry. Don't worry. No dwarf... Well, a dwarf died. He he is dead. He has, he has utterly perished. Uh, let's make some buckets because we end up never having those when we need them. And we're going to make some bins to store things, you know. It's it's going to be fine. But yeah, the Magistrate of Mundanus is fun, and we're going to put our Traveler game up there as well. So it's it's going to be fun. I really enjoy these RPGs that we've run. I know there's a lot of big Let's Player RPG groups and stuff. And that's neat and all, but they're not as precious to me as the ones that I run with my friends. And I, I know a lot of Hell people. Yeah. Well, it's it's one of those things where a lot of people have said, oh, have you watched this stream that does this big production? And I'm like, doesn't matter. Rolling dice in a basement over Pop-Tarts and Mountain Dew is going to beat any big production for me because that's me and my friends. That's Hey, you're here uh, because I, I agree with that because when you know that you're putting on a show or you know it's being recorded, there's a little bit. You see people like, one, the openness drops because people don't want to be as open when the world's going to hear it. And that, that always hurts kind of like, you know, it being buddy and friends. But then on the other side, it's like, you're also putting on a show. So is this really how you, you'd want to play, you know, well, it kind of limits. It's not only that. It's like when it's about money, that, that changes a lot of stuff. Oh, Cause now. it's like, imagine if, imagine if you were, you know, I said, how well do you drive? Like, how well do you drive your car? You'd probably say, okay. And I'd say, are you the best driver in the world? And you'd probably say like, probably not. But if I said, I'll pay you $1,000 an hour to drive, well, all of a sudden you're on your bestest, bestest, best. And that's not yeah, really how saying, you drive. like, I'm the best driver I know, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> so it's when it comes down to, like, role-playing games, as soon as money enters that realm, it changes it. So that's why when we record these, we typically try not to do them live, and we did them in seclusion so we can have the fun we want. And then we come back and share it with people and people are just laughing their asses off 
I can't say I'm the best driver I know. I'm a very aggressive driver. I've never I'm a very passive driver. I've never been hit by a by well, I've never hit anybody. Now I have been hit in traffic because I was parked and someone drove into my car, got out, oh and then started God. yelling at me. Now it was funny because I was driving a Ford Bronco, one of those old Ford Broncos at the time. So like my bumper got dented in. Their car was annihilated. And they were like, how dare you? And I'm like, what? Have a car made out of steel? <laughs> What's funny with that one is the lady who hit me then tried to say she didn't. She she literally sent there. No, it wasn't me. Yeah, she, she had a crumpled up car that was just folded in half. And she was like, that didn't happen. It just that that didn't happen. That wasn't me. Like the staggered defense, but for real. That's insane. People are weird. I I think that you, it's okay if you're weird, but you know you you got to be weird to a point that's acceptable to like most of humanity. Like you, you shouldn't be weird to the point where you're a danger to others. And there's some people when it gets to like driving, you're like, why, 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 why do you have a car? Who gave you a car? Why? They're like, I found it. I found this car. It's mine now. Man, I've got a lot of magnetite. I'm going to hope to smith it out. And then I'm going to put my uh, guy over here to being the broker in the sad person room. He's going to sit in the sad person room <laughs> and think about sad people things. That's 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 his job. So I've got a bunch of dwarves who are just walking through the giant blood smear that was once this guy, but isn't the guy anymore because the guy got murdered. And that that happens in Dwarf Fortress quite a bit. The whole getting murdered thing. Um, wow, this dwarf is a little bit injured. A little bit. They they probably got involved in that whole Paragon Falcon attack. Ow, my back. Ah. Oh, man. But yeah, I like... I really like a lot of the madness of of RPGs and I think that most people who play a lot of RPG video games would have a lot more fun playing RPGs in real tabletop when when you get into that magical world of anything goes and your imagination rules it not you know game coding that's that's when things get really fun oh shit there's the giant eagle that got murdered it was, yeah. it was a giant eagle that killed my guy. There's another one that's in a pile of vomit that's also dead. So, yeah. Talk about a way to go out. Damn. All right, so now I need to put some, uh, let's see, burial. I need to put some coffins in the ground here for the dwarfs who have died and are about to. There we <laughs> go. There we go. There we go. This, this is gonna, one goes out to you. This is going to be the funeral room. People are just going to be jammed in there and they're going to go like, this doesn't look nice. And they'll be like, hey, 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 hey. you know. Yeah, but, but where are the ghosts? Huh? Yeah, where are the ghosts? Not anywhere here because we buried you right. Hey, Super Chief. Thanks for 18 months. That's the championship belt level. Championship belt. You know, I uh, I had an interaction with a fan who I had made a joke saying that Captain Lou Albano is the most famous Italian captain in history. You know, that's the guy who played Mario on the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Oh, my God. And I was just saying that as a shit post. And the guy wrote in, and I thought I had made someone mad. Like, I thought I was going to have to apologize and everything. Because I don't mean to piss anyone off. I'm autistic. I say weird shit. And I, I don't mean to ever make anyone upset. But the guy came off as, like, really, really mad. And he said, no, the most famous Italian captain is Scotino. Uh, he's the guy who rolled the Costa Concordia. <laughs> that ocean liner. And I was like, good God. And he's like, you're welcome. <laughs> Shit posts. Uh, That's funny. Oh, you got to have fun. So as soon as we get these coffins in, uh, I can then start building out. Oh, we got another fight. Uh, Fisher Dwarf Sir Shaggio is fighting a giant wombat. And uh, that's that's interesting. That's that seems to be outside. Outside seems to have giant animals that we nice. have to fight, which is pretty cool. 
So as soon as we start getting uh, all this smoothed out, it's going to be really nice for the dwarfs, mostly. Uh, okay, we need to make a rock throne. We're going to need some chairs. I'm also getting them to make rock doors. And once we get enough thrones, chairs, doors, and buckets, and bins, we can have a dedicated big storage area for all the other stuff. Uh, and then I can make other industries on other floors. For a while, I was kind of obsessed with making um, volcano forts. Like, that was my big thing, like Bond villain volcano forts. I, I actually went through the same thing where all I want to do is make volcano forts. Well, I had a time where I wanted to make volcano forts. And then there was a time where I wanted to make... Um, I really wanted to make... Uh, oh, hold on. I need to do a tomb right there. Don't tell me. And then I hit accept. And we're going to put barely human in there. We're going to put his bones to rest. And then he'll be remembered at some point. The dwarves will show up and be like, I'm sad. Playing with lava for fun and profit. Burp, 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 burp. Yeah, every time I played with a volcano, I assume I know a lot about magma. Then I am wrong. <laughs> then I am inevitably proven wrong. I'm like, I, I can prove these shoes are fireproof. Then he was wrong. All right, barely human. Uh, is, is um he has been remarked upon. He has been noted by his dwarves. You have been noted, sir. You are noted. You were known for your horrific death to birds. You uh, you died to what you hated most, birds. But what we uh, have in the works behind the scenes, uh, we have a bunch of projects working uh, in the Black Pants Legion at the same time, which is typical of, of what we do. And we have some really fun special projects for the holidays, for Krimbus, Chris Mahana Kwanzaa. There, got most of them. Got them all. Got most, most of them. Uh, I'm sure there's some I've missed. I'm sure there, there will be someone who's like, what about Yule? And I'm like, fair. You can, Chris Mahana Kwanzaa Yule. There, done. But uh, what we've got going is we are working on a very special project, which is something we do every year. And we have this thing that's been going on for the channel for it started off in like 2016 or 2015. And it was called the Christmas dump. And the reason was, is that I had to like move across the country and mm -hmm. I didn't know when I was going to be ready to make more content. I didn't know what was going to go on. I, I had no idea when I was going to be able to get back to my computer. So I uploaded a shitload of content. Uh, for everyone to enjoy. And it was just an assload of stuff. So every day, like an advent calendar, you got a, you got a whole handful of fun things. So good. And the hack ended up eating up a lot of my footage. Um, a lot of stuff was lost and irrecoverable and including some of the Christmas dumps. And that really made me sad because those are just years and years and years of fun stuff. So this year I've made a dedicated effort. Uh, come hell or high water, we're going to have a very special Christmas dump. And uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really stupid. Um, Anything you can hint at that's special about it? All right, let's see. Is oh, hold on, alert. Oh man, the farmer's been found dead. Lord Grimos, oh, you have died. Grimos, no. You are fighting a peregrine falcon. What is with us and hating birds at this place? Man, those birds suck. Anyways, time for a tomb. Don't worry about it. It'll be all right. Oh this my boy. Don't worry. This is Dwarf Fortress. We chose a savage area. Like, Grimos is dead. Don't worry about it. It'll be okay. It'll, it'll be all right. It's an honor to die on a stream. Um, I've got probably already 10 good episodes of Space Station 13 for, for Krimbus. Um, I, I, got, I got one of Colonial Marines that's really funny. Uh, I've got <laughs> a bunch of Space Station 14 as well including our burger van shenanigans where there was like a gunfight in our burger bar. <laughs> um, and the foods kept disappearing on us. Yeah. We the pizza flew off on its own because ghosts, there was like, <laughs> there was ghosts. We had a problem with ghosts. It was pretty bad. Um, we have a very top secret project that I hinted on, uh, on, on the BPL Patreon. However, everyone who listens to the update has to promise to keep it secret. Pinky swear. Keep it secret. 
keep it safe. safe. Yeah. We're we're working on a bunch of fun little things. And I think that's kind of the key. Wow, my dwarves really run in the gamut of like happy to not not happy. So I need to really um make this fortress less crap in a hurry because I am gonna run out of resources. We're running low on drink, so I need to hurry this up. I need to put a chair there, and I need to put a door there. And then I need to put a secondary door there. This two doors keeps the sad man in the sad room. And that there will be meth for kids against Dragger. <laughs> we will do meth for children. That is the that is the that is the community strike that I take every year on the chin. Because the first year we did it on accident was the first that was the biggest amount of money we ever raised in one go. It was like twenty three grand in like Ooh. one sitting. Of of just raising money for charity, and we were like, "What the fuck?" Because we had no idea what was going on, and we we're like, "What does this button do?" Oh, you can raise money for charity. Well, that sounds like something we should do with this limited power we have, and it was just <laughs> huge. So we were like, "Fuck yeah!" And so that became kind of that was the starting point of doing everything for charity. It was like this this is what you should use your power for on this platform. Because a lot of people are like, "What do you use the power for on YouTube?" And they're like, "Sell T-shirts," and I'm like. Eh, make your own t-shirts. What if we just used it for good while doing stupid things? And then that, that just kind of worked out. All right, we're going to need to start making... And a lot of shirts were made, actually, by random people. <laughs> yeah, people have made random shirts for years. Hold on, I need to go into my... Oh, man, what am I fucking up? What am I fucking up? Kitchen? Yes, you may not use it to make food, only booze. Boots. We also have uh, in the works um, the Cargo Songbook Volume 1, which is a lot of Space Station 13 songs. Uh, <laughs> and and we, we have as well in the works some other music stuff. So we're, we're hitting on all cylinders right now. Welcome back, Grimos. I'm sorry, but you died. You died, Grimos. Um, you died. I've Oh, the yak cow has been missing for a week. Oh, no. Anyways. They killed by a falcon. I'm not. I'm not looking outside. Outside is not my business. My my business is inside the mountain home. It's true. They shouldn't be outside in the first place. Yeah. Why? How'd you die? Oh, you went outside. Well, that sounds. This is like, like a, a fallout vault suddenly. Yeah. It's like oh oh oh, giant wombats fighting and another oh, yeah. Yeah, that's not good. One of those giant wombats has a name now, which means it's leveled up more or less it's become legendary really yeah that's not a good thing i remember in the olden days you'd run into elephants that had like 50 legendary names and it'd be like the great stomper of the dwarves and you'd be like oh shit it's like six elements are dead because of this one elephant <laughs> i had an elephant charge in in the olden days i want to say like oh nine oh yeah another alpaca went missing not my business and you should have some bones out in front of your fortress. I mean, you're trying to strike dread upon upon your enemies. I mean, come on. All right, we're gonna build a stockpile. Uh, there we go. We're gonna build this. Oh fuck, I fucked that up. All right, we do that, and then we go accept, and then this is gonna be for corpses. Actually, you know what? It needs to be for corpses and refuse both. There, done and done. This is the the corpse pile where you throw your bodies. Oh God! Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. It's gonna be okay. You're gonna need a bigger body pile, man. Is Gertie? We've only lost two dwarves, and one of them yeah. was the least happy one. So I mean, come on. It's <laughs> it was just like I'm so upset, and I'm like, <laughs> he's walking outside, being like, man, I could deal with this like a deal with a falcon attack, and it's like, uh oh. You said the magic word. All right, no more, no, not wooden bins, wooden buckets. We have enough. Let's make some beds for people. Once we give people beds, they'll be okay. They've made dwarves a lot harder to make happy, I've noticed. Like, they get, they get pissed. All right, now we do this, and we do uh, an office, and this is where the guy sits in the office, and he's got his little office, and then what I do is I then have to go into this area, right? 
mm-hmm. and we go into uh, nobles and administrators. Shut the fuck up, game. And then we go expedition leader. That's nice. Where is the broker? Okay, let's see. Uh, bar, bar, bar. Lord Nerd the Blacksmiths apparently is pretty okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. The trader. That's that's who it needs to be. The bookkeeper and the trader. There. Yep. And so they, they lack an office, they say. I'll fix that. So then we go into our happy little area, and we do this, and we add this, and we go, oh, where where is the trader? Let's see. Woodworker, glassmaker, bun, mason, dwarf, bah, bah. What the fuck? The where? beta branch has some nice improvements, like easy access to the alerts again. Well, that's nice. That's nice. Hold on. I, I don't even know to, where they were in the first place. Need to double check our, okay. Dogs and cats. That's the name of the guy. So let's get into there. Dogs and cats. Broker. There. Done. So soon we will have an accurate counting of how many dead dwarves and stuff we got in here. And that'll be a beginning. And then we're going to start putting beds in these rooms and the dwarves will have beds. It'll be nice. I am missing the soundtrack though. Um... You have that jingle in the background. It's nice. It is nice. It it makes it makes happy. It makes contented while the while the you know the long dark of whatever you're doing is slowly destroying your soul. Ah, let's see. All right, we've got plenty of dwarves making beds. Wooden bins is going to be a continual one, and then we're going to go in here and build some rooms for the dwarves. And the dwarves will be fine. We've struck Malachite. Yaks and stuff are fighting. That's none of my business. None of my business. All right, here we go. Bed, bed. Bed, bed. And there we go. We're starting to put these rooms together for the dwarves, which is going to be pleasant. I probably started too late to make them happy enough to not kill me, which is going to suck. But if only some of them go crazy, we should be okay. Okay, now we have an accurate drink. We have 66 drink, and we have plenty of seeds, it looks like. It'll be all right. Yeah, we're good. It's going to be good. But yeah, the Christmas... So if you have harbor farmer level, do you get more seeds? or I think it's more efficient. Better chance it's seeds. I think it's okay. more more efficient uh, harvesting. It's not quite like RimWorld, where RimWorld has some... Well, depending on the mods, because as I was... <laughs> we were talking about that in the BPO yesterday, where people were like, RimWorld's a great game. And I'm like, play it unmodded. Play it no mods, as is base-ass RimWorld. Go ahead, I'll wait. And that's that's a very stout thing because within 10 minutes you're like man i miss this i miss that i miss this i miss that and rimworld's one of those games that is just a magnificent uh mod platform and there's no sin in saying something's a great mod platform i've never felt that dwarf fortress needed mods it can benefit from them and i've i've used mods before but i've i've never said that dwarf fortress needs mods i know there's there's a lot of higher end door fortress stuff that can be done through mods but it it never struck me as like necessary probably yeah. wasn't then again i can't play rim world without mods i'm one of those persons who has had so many tastes of so many fun things i'm like i need my nuclear reactor i need to start uranium jail see if i was a, if i was a grab rim world now with no dlcs as it is when I tried to play through vanilla myself, I actually got burnt out pretty quick. It just didn't really feel that great. So with, I played it all the way through and got like off the planet and total go beat the game. But all I did was put in quality of life mods, not really like more overpowered stuff. And just that was enough to get me through like the main game uh, without feeling like I've changed the game to Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or some mix, you know? I but I like, after the, after I did mod it, now it's like impossible to go back. Well, I I love the weird tales that spin out of my absolutely fucked up RimWorld experience, like Uranium Jail. Um, I may have to record some RimWorld for the Christmas dump, but Uranium Jail is one of those things I do where I go through the joys of starting a nuclear power program. And you have to run up a nuclear reactor and you need to run up a nuclear reactor and you need to get the nuclear reactor, you know, producing, you know, banging atoms together and making energy. And in the process of that, things happen. So I had a lot of, you know, radioactive waste 
And a lot of this radioactive waste was just everywhere, you know, because it, it, it just, you deal with a lot of it. Reactors make a lot of waste. So I had all these barrels full of radioactive waste and, uh, you know, no, no place to put them. So I ran out of room inside my nice little cavern in the, in, in the mountain. And I said, well, I'll just make a room where I just pile up these barrels of uranium sludge and just hope I don't ever have to deal with them. So the pile got bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger. And, and this, this pile just gets so big full of radioactive shit. And I'm like, man, this is really a problem. So um, then it came down to where I was getting incessant raider attacks. Just every five seconds was like, I will drink from your skull. You know, just bad <laughs> dudes coming up, trying to fuck me up. And I'm going, man, this is really bad. And so try as I might to kill all of them with, you know, bouncing baddies, landmines, maxim guns, razor wire, obelisk of light, all the other stuff I'd built. I was sitting there going, man, I really, really wish I could kill all these guys, but inevitably there's like 20 of them in this giant raid that I fail to murder. And I'm mm -hmm. like, God damn it. I can't kill all of them, which is upsetting. I mean, you build a death trap and you can't kill everyone with it. It just makes you feel like less of a man. It's really sad. So in this process of, of trying to build the ultimate murder fort, I end up with all these people I have to capture. I have no place to put them. And then I remember, well, I do have that room, you know, where I store stuff. So I put the guys in the room, you know, where I store stuff like, you know, mm -hmm. those barrels. Now, uranium jail is really interesting um, <laughs> because every day they're in there, they get weaker. So you don't have them breaking out and start fights with people. They just get weaker and weaker and weaker. And they're like, you know, their hair falls out and they can't do anything but crawl. And I'm like, yeah, that's what you get. So it's like, oh no, I'm taking you to jail. And it's like, are you going to stab me? No. Are you going to torture me? No. And they're like, what are you going to do? Just stay in this room. And it just slowly deals with them. It's not murder. It's passive. It's science. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's, you're, uh, you're it's fast forwarding. It's, it's, it's a warm, sleepy room. You, you just get in there. It's all warm and cozy. It doesn't need any heaters in it. Very so cozy room. Energy in this room is really making me feel alive. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's so, it's so happy and normal and don't read too much into it. Oh man, I love being able to paint multiple bedrooms in this. I know some people say that the new door fortress isn't great, and those people are just salty bitches because this <laughs> this is actually quite nice. <laughs> they are. It's just nice. Everything in this is really pleasant. It's it's like oh cool, nice. Everything is pleasant. It's yeah. I'm gonna have some dwarves lose their fucking minds because people died to the bird attacks, but it could be worse. So I'm going to make a nice little dining room over here where they can sit in the dark and eat their fungus. And uh, that is just a pool of blood uh, around a dwarf. I'm not going to read into that. That's their business, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything's fine. Spicy. Don't, don't worry about it. I don't worry about it. No one else should worry about it. Oubliette. That's the word. Yeah. The French word for to forget. You you have a dungeon below the dungeon in which you chuck people and then you forget them. The French are pretty fucked up when it comes to that stuff. Like, you're like, oh man, this, these medieval knights are crazy guys. And I'm like, don't read the French literature. You're just like, oh my God, why would you do that? And they're like, Greg will sit there and be like, it, it seems civilized. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, that'll be too good, no? <laughs> I wish they die slower. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna we're gonna knock all this out. We're gonna make sure the dwarves have their beds, and then some of them will be happy. Two of them are absolutely butt hurt, furious, probably for very good reasons. But <laughs> we're gonna do our best to make sure they have beds and stuff. I'm trying to make sure we also have good smelters. I'm gonna try to get craft dwarf workshops up. I'm also gonna try to get these guys to finish building things so everyone can eat at the table. That's one thing I never got over in RimWorld was how people would lose their fucking mind. They would become perma unglued at eight without table. Like eight without <laughs> table Classic. is like watching someone murder your family. They just go, 
you, uh, you, ah. you, you made me eat without a table? And you're like, well, yeah, I don't have a table. And they're like, ah, they could get shot. They don't mind. Like, I have been wounded. Minus one unhappy thought. Eight without table. Minus 500. I, I just do it, like, apparently on this, like, it's kind of like the water ritual being a little bit weird that you're sharing your water with somebody. It makes sense because it's life. But some people just see that table thing and be like, if you do not build me a table, I can't survive. I can't. There's no, there's no, like what changes us from the beast to men, you know? Yeah. Like what's the Which difference? I mean, us. this, uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's people and there's animals. This separates people us. People in your tables. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to make wooden crowns for people so they can wear those and be like, ah, that's sharp. Um, yeah, we'll do some They're wooden. They're just going to walk around saying, I am the Duke. I am the Duke. <laughs> uh, wooden crowns, good. And then we're going to do metal smith. All right, good. Smelters. We have no means by which to smelt, which means I need to build a coal coking furnace. Let's see, where is it? Uh, wood furnace, there we go. We're going to build some... Oh, we're going to use chert blocks. Chert. I remember we had that one fortress where everything was made out of chalk. And so it's like, imagine you have a chalk door and you slam uh, it and it just turns into smoke. You're just like... <laughs> you would, I have the white lung pop. <laughs> Father, I have the white lung. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. You do great. not know the white lung. <laughs> you don't know. You weren't in the mines. Okay, let's do this, and then go down and 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 do... Oh, ah, saving world. Please don't end. Please don't explode. Please... Let's go. Yeah, we gotta wait. It's thinking. It's like, uh, eh. There could be... Oh, God. Thank God. It's probably just deciding which core was going to do that. Yeah, I had to think about it. Oh, cool. It says a goat grew up. That's nice. Oh, we have a cat now. It's just running around. Good. Good. We only have two dead dwarves, and depending on how many good, like, very upset, that could go up, but it's not terrible. All right, let's see. Uh, storage over here is going to be our finished goods stockpile. Not finish goods. That would be different. Percolate. <laughs> Percolate. Satana Percolate. Yeah, the uh, Finns are fun. Strangely enough, I have a lot of fans in Finland, and I don't know why. You think it's all the isolation sitting inside, and they just like watching a lot of Dwarf Fortress, you know? Yeah, it has to be just like a niche thing or something, because like, oh, man. Yeah. Like, we've had a lot of fans. A lot of, yeah. Oh, that whole, like, northern area. Shut-ins enjoy the Legion. It's the long winters, folks. Long winters. All right, so we're going to have... It's a, watch this or eat the cold fish heads. That's true. Thanks, Matt. That's, that's fair. That's fair. All right, so we've got enough tables. Now I need to build more blocks. I'm going to try to make the dwarves happier. Though this is sometimes like a fucking disaster. And so here we go. We're going to do bedrooms. We're going to do multi bedrooms. And then we're going to do that. And we're going to get done. And look, new bedrooms for the dwarves. Happy, happy for some of them. The rest of them will just be pissed constantly. How quickly does it reflect their mood? Like the moment they realize they have a bed, it just modified changes or it's it, over time? It's a slow over time as far as I can tell. Back in the day, if you gave them a room that had everything nice in it, they would be like constantly ecstatic. They'd be like, my child died, but look, I have a room. And they would just get over it. This They're, free chest has my child in it, but look, a room. Yeah, they would be pretty jazzed by pretty much everything, which is nice. So I'm going to build uh, limestone, uh-huh, limestone, uh-huh, limestone, because I need to build a floor. This is all mud, essentially. I could build another farm in this area, which is nice to know if I need to, because I could just expand this to the north and have another farm, which is quite good. <laughs> WBPL's new tag, like, better than eating cold fish heads. I don't know. I mean, I've never tried it. I'm allergic as shit to fish, but I mean, to each their own. Maybe maybe someone really likes it. Yeah, I like the crunch of the head. I like looking at something. I like looking at his little beady eyes and knowing I got him. 
I don't know. I mean, maybe it's better if you like snatch it out of the water yourself, you know, and you just bite into it. It's it's, it's like I mean, nature's... I would I would do it like you know what I would do. I would take it. I would get a deep fryer going, and then I would like dip the de- head in there like a like a jus, but with uh, deep fry. Yeah, that's that's basically <laughs> that's basically fondue. Uh, yeah. Except without well, I mean, there's actually not cheese fondue. There's cheese or there's fondue where you just fry shit. You just fry shit at the table. Yeah, or the. I right. guess it's not ice fish heads or cold fish heads at that point. Well, maybe you could fry them up first and then, I don't Fish know. head fondue, that's the way to do it. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to make a dining hall, a mighty dining hall for the <laughs> dwarves. Um, they're they're going to enjoy this this hall of dining. It's certainly not just a bunch of tables pushed together. Look, they're all, you, you can sit down and eat. It's a win. Wait, two tables rejected, not enclosed. What? Oh, you have to have like a door? Oh, I'll make a door. Don't you fucking worry. I'll just have to put a block in the middle and then two doors, and then they can go in and out. It'll be simple. Med says, I have a Japanese market nearby that has some big-ass fish heads. (laughs) I I don't eat fish. Um, Horribly allergic, but I know know a lot of people who love love fish, so fish heads of those people who who would or would not eat, let, let me know. Like, it, is that is that something that you would try, or is that just too outside the pale? I, I'm not the expert here. I expect to see that video soon, Mad Dex, now. Even though I don't do that. It's uh, Welcome to WBPL76, home of the fried fish head fondue special with a side of beans. Please seat yourself. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta get your beans. Vitamin B. We're all under the umbrella corp of Tom, of White Tom's. Well, you know, I mean, people said why Tom's isn't real. And I'm like, are you sure about that? Why don't you go Google why Tom's bean house and tell me? I'll exactly. wait. I'll wait. All right, let's see. Okay, as soon as we get another door, we can make everything fine. Okay, wood furnace. I don't think you can make the doors out of ham. That would be horrifying. Welcome to Dude, the ham. There has to be a mod that's like fish blocks and other fur- or meat blocks and other furniture. I think there is a meat block thing for RimWorld. <laughs> I think I've seen... No, I've seen bones where you can turn bones Oh, into I know it. bones. <laughs> but, oh man, imagine like every corpse is like three pieces of wall. I, and, you have to, and you have to collect people to build your base. I had one of the most odd conversations once in the BPL because I was Depp and I both mod very weird RimWorld mods and we're we're sitting there talking about the stuff we were working on and I had put um the the hobbits from Lord of the Rings into my world because I think you know it's fun to have a faction of just people who walk around and smoke pipe weed and are like inoffensive you know and typically don't bother you Mm -hmm. Uh oh oh no bionic babe has been found dead Oh no! Is it a peregrine falcon? It just says found dead and out here by herself, just hanging there. Just hang there's nothing Oh oh no giant eagle. Giant oh, eagle. Oh god, did it. baby, no. You killed the giant the, eagle at least. So this, you, this wombat and eagle combo are gonna be legendary for Yeah, well the eagle's dead. She killed it. Okay, good. Good job, baby. You you go out as the eagle slayer. Yeah. But the wombat, the legendary wombat's still out there. And one of you in the crowd are going to have to go get it. I'm not going to deal with any of that. Well, it's going to deal with us then. <laughs> it says, coffin rejected, not enclosed. That's what? odd. Hold on. The not inside the... Uh... I'm wondering what is going on here. I may need to just build some walls and stuff and figure this out. Uh, buh, 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 buh wall but yeah uh we we had we had some really weird messed up moments in in discussing rim world mods and one of my favorites was i had these hobbits and the hobbits kept attacking me like it was verdun they they would just like attack me in waves so i just had waves and waves of hobbits and being like, it's a Maxim gun, Mr. Frodo. And just, I was just laying let out and blowing these guys to pieces. I was like, get off my lawn. So I'm just <laughs> sitting there, you know, blowing up 
blowing up hobbits because they, you know, I had a minefield and everything else. And I was like, get off my lawn, clickety clack, get the foot back. You just, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> and you just claymores and everything else. It was horrific. It was a horrific amount of murder. And so I had all these hobbit corpses and I had it said uh, to where I could basically use the, the hobbit corpses for me. And the humans wouldn't mind because it's a different species. They were like, oh, that's, oh, man. that's not a big deal. Uh-oh, Dots is fighting a giant chipmunk. What in the cinnamon toast fuck? Dots? Okay, I see chipmunk's teeth are everywhere. Giant chipmunk tooth. So he's just punching it in the mouth a lot. Get it, Dots? Yeah, so I'm just going to let that sort of... Is he of alive or what? Oh, he's still alive. He, he's, oh, thank he's, God. He's still fighting the giant chipmunk and beating its brains out. So I guess Dots has just been like, I had enough of this shit. He kept dropping nuts on his head. And he's like, that's it. It's Dorphin Get time. Get me mallet. It's Dorphin time. And then he dwarfed all over the place. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna build some nice rooms for the dwarves, and it's gonna be okay. Maybe <laughs> we're slowly building some nice rooms for them. Not great rooms, just nice, nice ones. So is a giant chipmunk like the size of a cat? Because that's double the size of a raccoon, or, or or like a squirrel, or is a squirrel like the size of a? dog or a horse like, like how big is a giant i don't know it's freaking me out too because like it's perspective is a giant compared to a human or giant compared to a squirrel because a squirrel is like a well, cat here's thing. the agitated giant chipmunk that it, it feels hopeless and is afraid after experiencing trauma so oh no it got punched it he's got punched out by dots everywhere just dots beat that thing into a coma it's just like i'm tired of this chipmunk shit Improve raccoons being standard unit of animal size. All right, how many raccoons is this chip? <laughs> Could be pretty big, man. I I mean, it's a fucking chipmunk, and I mean, you know, they could, they could be dangerous. Traumatized it, just beat the shit out of it, and it's like, oh, I'm just gonna sit up in this tree. Yeah, just it just beat it. Within an inch of his life, <laughs> Dots climbs up and falls and breaks his leg, starts screaming. No, it's I just would die. It's laying on the porch, just absolutely mangled, and there's chipmunk teeth everywhere. So beat all of its teeth out, and and now it's just dying. And I I guess that's what happens when you when you fuck up in chipmunk land, you know, like it's it's just no. All right, so we've got at least a good start to the fortress. Nowhere near as efficient as most of my forts, but uh, yeah, good enough. I'm sure Pablo is probably screaming. He's like, this isn't efficient. And it's like, Pablo. He showed up earlier, saw your thing, and then just left immediately. <laughs> it was too much for him to take. He's like, oh, the opulence. The, it, is, it is opulent. It is, a, it is a very opulent fortress. Right, let's do a quick stretch. They would like a stretch. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. Good enough. Ooh. So, all right. So yeah, just you gotta you gotta terrorize a chipmunk with a hammer. That's that's just door fortress things. Uh, I'm gonna need a dumb labor guy at some point. We're getting back up in the drinks and seeds department, which is good. We have plenty of trees knocked down because elves are terrible and should never be ever trusted for any reason. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, it says rejected, not enclosed. Select another rectangle. So check check the zone and see if it like that whole area is considered the uh, like a it's like a. It's two? A, yeah, it's it's I I have each of these selected as just. Huh. That is odd. So I'm gonna. It's put... weird that those two are fine, but the other ones are not. Yeah. That Maybe is. They finish the doors. Yeah, each there coffin right. needs its own tomb zone. I've been trying that. See, as you can see, I have tomb zones for each of these guys. So I'm they also here. have plaques or something you can engrave of people's names if they don't have a body. Uh, I had I it set to bodies. multi. That's what it was. Oh. I, had it, I had it stuck on multi. That's my mistake. I had one little button wrong. I had fucked it up. So don't worry. That's a my that's a my mistake. And there Probably is a roof. Try, try harder. Try Thanks, harder. Man. Don't fuck up. All right. 
I'm gonna kill with a hammer. Hammer of chipmunk slain plus one. God, can you imagine that's a D and D item? <laughs> it's like, what's the backstory? It's like I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no migrants this season. They heard about the chipmunk. They were like, oh, aren't no. you a druid? It's like not all nature's nice. <laughs> Nature is pretty fucked up. Like I would not trust a druid. Me either. And they'd be like, I talk to dogs and they have a lot of good points. And I'm like, shut up. I would just feel so annoyed because I'd leave my house and they'd seem it's like, huh, oh, huh, taking care of your garden? It's like, not really this year. It's like, yeah, they're screaming for water. It's like, that's nice. They're like, <laughs> the plants are not in. I'm like, blah, 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 shut up. You want the plants, take them. Yeah, take the plants, hippie. So... <laughs> <laughs> They just awaken the plant and it just judges you outside your window all day. The plant outside screaming. Ah, water ah, me. Water so me. Hot. <laughs> You're not using good fertilizer. I'm like, uh All right, so we're gonna put Bionic in a in a box and she'll forgive hey. us. It'll be alright. Soon to be upgraded to mega robotic. All right. Getting, let's uh, see. She had an upgraded spine soon. Yeah. Cyborg. Cyborg. So we've got the basics started at least. It seems like some of my some of my dwarves are just a little bit a little bit butthurt, upset, upsetty spaghetti. And that's fine because there have been some deaths and there was some hardship. And that's the door fortress in a nutshell. You know? It's it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Now, what I need to do, Bionic, don't worry, you're only dead in the game. But uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to make everything fine. And all the dwarves are going to have a fine time. It's going to be okay. We have 14 dwarves, and most of them are not insane. I only have two that are getting so mad they might kill everyone. They might go oh, postal. No. And that's fine. Sometimes that happens. They get a little, you know, upsetting in the spaghetti and then bad, bad. But, you know, okay. I, eh, 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 it's the way I see it. I'm not using good fertilizer. The answer is, yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. I know if you gave a shit, it would be good fertilizer. It depends on the shit. That's True. that's the thing is that like people think all oh, caca is the same when it comes to fertilizing. It's not. That's that's just one of those things where some some fertilizers are in fact far better because if you use chicken shit, uh, it it can actually have I think too many nitrates and it can fuck your plants up. All right, I'm gonna take this wagon apart. Well, actually, no, I'm gonna need more dumb labor to make that happen. I, I'm gonna need dwarves that are just permanently running back and forth, moving stuff. I, you go take that apart. It's like, oh, my dream. The Ikea dwarves, you know. Dwarves for Ikea people. They have way too high shells for a dwarf place. I know. I once got lost in Ikea for three hours, and I thought I was losing my mind because I'm like, why is this lamp spelled Florndarf or whatever? And I was, I, I thought I was like, I had entered a different reality. One made of very sad things. I was like, what is this Wait. place? I went to an Ikea in New York uh, when I was a kid, and I got so nervous because I couldn't just find a way out. <laughs> I had to ask somebody to help let me leave. They're like, please let me leave this realm. They're like, no. They're like, oh, no, it's set up like this on purpose. I'm like, to kidnap uh -oh, kids? Digiman has been found dead. Oh, no. Oh, uh, yeah, Giant Eagle. Giant Eagle again. Digiman, no. Yep, it's all right. Don't worry about it. It look, people die all the time. <laughs> this eagles, it can't keep getting away with it. Yeah, they can. I'm not Damn. gonna go bother them because this is a savage biome, which means that it's gonna come down to a handful of dwarves to traumatize the livestock. Oh wow! <laughs> like they just put Digimon on the ground there, just dead. Like just there. Like you can live with the rocks. Will someone please move for, him? For now. He loved those rocks. He was such a happy person. He loved his so many, rocks. So many rocks. He has a lot of... You know, I'm going to... Do we have two people we could name? One moment. I'm I'm going... Do we? Oh, yeah. Huh. Seems like either All the right. names didn't take, or these people snuck in and I didn't notice. 
Yeah, it's probably that one. Probably that one. I probably fucked up. I'm going to make Dots carry stuff. Sorry, Dots. Say goodbye to your Sorry, spine. Sorry, Dots. Um, all right. Yeah, let's name these dwarves again. Renaming dwarves. All right. All right. All right. This next one is Pistol 6699. Nice. Nice. All right. Done. And who else we got? It, b- 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 this Miner one. at the top. Yep. Go. This one will be Vox Darkstar. Vox Dark. Dorkstar? Damn. Darkstar. I almost typed dork just because I called <laughs> someone a dork earlier today and it's just been stuck in my head. And I was like, all right. There's look. two dark stars now. Dark load star? Oh, I guess it's a load star, not a dark star. Yeah. There's a load star and a dark star. Kangaroos are fighting. Uh oh my god. Uh House 6153 has been found dead. Drowned. Oh no. House 6153, no. Well, we're going to need to make more coffins. I think I know what our main business is going to be from here on out. Come down to Come on down to the coffin st- store. Come oh down my god. Burp coffin store. Oh my Sir god. Sir Shaggy is dead. Quinlist is dead. Oh no. There is a kangaroo buck that kicked the shit out of people. <laughs> All right. So, this is what happens when you get names. Don't go outside, guys. <laughs> yeah, there's a dead, flattened kangaroo, and just we've been attacked by nothing but wildlife. What a yeah, rough the giant eagles, the combat wombat, and now a kangaroo. We're all beating the shit out. Oh God, it's coming inside. Oh God, it's there it is. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, there's more than one. There's it's, two. It's of going downstairs. Things. No, it's it's had enough. Oh God, it's it's just hanging out now. It doesn't it doesn't seem to bother anyone. It seems a bit scared of the dwarves, which is good. That's too funny. Yeah, we. Holy shit. Yeah, we've. They've. They've. The. It's like naked mole rats, but deadly. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, is it chasing a dwarf? It is. All right. Fuck this shit. Oh, guys, look at him and kill him. All right. Look, there's. Lord I've never been good at combat or like recruiting people to fight. It stuff is a in. pain in the ass still. So, what you have to do is you have to make. Uh, let me remember. Militia commander, Militia? Okay. and then yeah, Lord Nerd Blacksmith there. So then we go into uh, the military tab. Thank you. Create new squad. No uniform. And then uh, I go into, uh, is this, there's the leader sheet, who is the militia commander, right? Thank you, Mr. Train. And we're going to go ahead and tell that guy to attack that. Confirm. And off duty no you're not no you are not you are you are on current kangaroo fighting there we go wow blood already this kangaroo is kicking the shit out of everyone quite literally like uh, i went after him with an axe <laughs> yeah went after him with an axe and it's just like holy crap what is wrong with this kangaroo is injured and terrified it's it's overcome by terror no shit <laughs> It's it's just running around constantly now. And I've got my one militia commander just stomping after it. <laughs> Alright, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna get into uh the militia here. View the positions. And you know what? Guess what? Everyone's in the military now. There. <laughs> You're Done. all welcome. back to squads, and then you are all going to You're kill the kangaroo. Gang- <laughs> the kangaroo. <laughs> Beat that thing to death. Holy Dead <laughs> Dead. <laughs> oh. Oh, right. there's one more in there, but one more before we get rid of him. There he is. Oh, yeah, he's sitting. Oh, oh crap. God damn it. There he is. All right, hold he's on. He's trying to work uniform. The okay, da 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 da. Let me, just, let me just put all the people in the militia again, and then I'll be like, hey, you're on kangaroo duty. Back to squads. You know what? You. Uh huh. Stab kangaroo. Confirm. Yep. There we go. Everyone yep. get yep. him, boys. Yep. They're just tearing it apart. Done. <laughs> <laughs> temporary military go. to purge the kangaroo menace just surround it yep. and mine it to death only took seven kills <laughs> before you're like we should fight back i just get See, tired that's the, that's the man i just get tired I, i'm just like so tired. just leave it alone i don't i don't care anymore fucking i'm gonna get inspired and make like some earrings made out of kangaroo bone 
Yeah, we got nine dwarves and a bunch are pissed because of the, the rampant kangaroo attacks, which I understand. There's there's just a corpse lying at the bottom of the well. Yeah, this is this is a fort already <laughs> on its way to grim times. But hey, don't worry. We're going to have enough coffins soon to bury all of us. <laughs> We're going to make so many good coffins. Coffin productions at an all-time high. All right, so look, we got our coffins. It's all good. There were many kangaroo-related deaths, but before that, it was giant eagles. Ah, miasma. That's from the guy stinking the place up. Yep, yep. All right, you know what? Dump that. I need to tell the kangaroo. Not that. There. Dump the kangaroo. Where's the other one we... Oh, man. You know what? Yeah. Where's the other one? There's the one we flattened. Get rid of that. Get rid of that chipmunk. That's a giant chipmunk that came in here. We just got to beat that. Throw that out with a the trash. There's another one in the corner. What? Oh, he's, he's dead. Yeah, there's a lot of kangaroos in the corner. It is. This is a rue apocalypse. I don't I don't trust them. It's not boat murder. It's rue murder. That's the thing, man. There's a lot of dead kangaroos. And I've I've put one person, which is Dots. All Dots does is haul stuff. And I'm like, please, please go haul things. Please, please haul the aminals to the garbage dump. This is bad times. But also, I haven't played Door Fortress in a hot bit. Oh my god, we have a, a, a deer inside that's just walking around. They and love the smell of miasma. They they love <laughs> they love the smell of our fortress. They're like, oh, what a wonderful place. All right, make rock blocks, make rock coffin. All right, now we need to bury more dwarves. We're just gonna rock we're just gonna stuff. bury our dwarves. It's gonna be fine. Macho bobbins. It's gonna be fine. All right. Now everyone can rest. Everyone can have a seepy until we get a ghost or something. This guy is seriously injured. It won't turn out well, is his thought. Well, no shit. <laughs> they ain't good looking good. Well, look at it this way. We have more bedrooms now. We have more than enough bedrooms for all of the dwarves. And I'm gonna I'm gonna actually tell all of our our engraver people to engrave the rooms. So they will be like, Oh, these rooms are fantastic. And I'll be like, Yes. Yes indeed. These rooms are fantastic. We have a lot of seriously injured dwarves, which sucks. That's that's what happens when you let wildlife in. So who all died? Well, uh, let's see. Well, Barely human, Lord Grimos, the Bionic Babe, Digiman, and a few others. Uh, there's one that's oh my god, yeah, Scarab Nate. He's he's very dead. Poor Scarab. Well, you know, sometimes you fall down the stairs for all time. Like Gandalf. <laughs> when you get kicked by a kangaroo down the stairs, yeah. Giant kangaroo. We we have, I mean, we've just got so many horrible animals because this is a very aggressive biome, which was <laughs> funny. We should have chosen something that was easier, but it wouldn't have been this fun. Yeah. Cut out the middle, man. Well, if you, you play in a stones. serene biome that's like really pleasant and idyllic and serene, you end up with with this fortress that is essentially nothing is bad. Everyone is just constantly happy. They're just like, oh, this is fine. Everything's fine. Even if it's not. How overdone will the kangaroo carving be? Well, let's see. Uh, let's see. Image of dwarves. Dwarves are traveling. Okay, the, that's uh, uh -huh. a lot of stuff about the civilization so far. Nothing about the kangaroo. Nothing about the aminal attacks yet. So they're they're early in their art. Uh, let's see. Masterful cedar bin. They're celebrating that. The the bin of cedar that was made. Very nice cedar bin, by the way. Excellent. I've seen cedar it. Bin. I've seen a lot of cedar bins. This one's a lot, up there. lot of cedar, apparently. So I think someone Legion needs to show us their mem run of CDDA. I, you know, there's a couple people in the Legion who play CDDA pretty great. It's just hard to get them like 
it, it comes in waves. Like you hear about it after the fact where they have like a full farm set up or something. Well, it's not like that. It's it's CDDA is one of those things where it's like played personally. Like someone will say, I play CDDA and they don't typically share it. Not a, not a lot of people are deep down with CDDA. Okay, let's see. Dwarves Foundation of this. I'm trying to see about these. Let's see. Yeah, no, they talk about people's job promotions. Nothing about the uh, nothing about the kangaroo yet. Not saying there won't be anything about the kangaroo. It's it's there probably will be. There's probably going to be like a lot of grim shit about kangaroos. Oh, there's another body. Yeah, we still haven't buried most of the dwarves, which is we're it, working on it. Doss is doing his hardest to collect all those bodies. He's he's running around doing his job. Let's see, dots. Come on. We're hoping to we're hoping to make the fortress last, but that last meme attack of animals is just great. And Rikon, oh yeah, Rikon Roleplays is a great channel for CDDA. Rikon's cool. Oh oh, he is. no migrants this season. Not one. No, we don't need more tomb zones. We have empty coffins. Uh, it's just that no one's gone out to uh, do the collection and burials yet, which does happen. Uh, we're just going to have to fill this room full of corpses. I mean, honored dead. Honored dead. Honored dead. And then we're going to make uh, another room. Oh, no. Wait, yes. Dogs, no. cats, see. F okay. I thought something bad had happened. Okay. Oh, Riff the Raff has been found dead. No, Riff! Giant eagle. A giant eagle got Riff to the Raff. Oh, I'm sorry, bud. Yeah, giant eagle killed him. May your ten biddies rest with you in your coffin. This is horrifying. It's just like every time we go outside, a giant bird swoops down and takes someone. Oh my god, look, there it is. Oh my god. It's got get a the, name. The, oh my god, get the uh, get the group together. We got to kill this Got to get the band back together. Holy shit. Uh create new squad. <laughs> uh look at the size of that. I I'm in it's awe. It's huge. I didn't even think it was that big. I thought it was just like a normal. Holy shit, that's awesome. All right. All right, squad. Got to we got to we got to um, get the, revenge for a rift to the raft. It's the final countdown. Kill the eagle. Kill it. Okay, Get yes, it, boys. yes. They killed it. Yes. That'll feed us for minutes. <laughs> Good God. Hell yeah. It's I... the power of, that's the power of working as a team, guys. Instead of watching your fellows die to the kangaroo for three days. <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, is The giant eagle, Shoal Kikam. In the trash. Hell yeah. Wow. Wow, that that thing was huge. It was just flying inside like I'm here to kill. And I'm like, why is there an eagle in my house? You have been avenged Riff, to the raft. And everyone else who has died to that eagle. That eagle had a name. That's horrifying. It'll be in history books. Yeah. Eagle good eating, apparently. I wouldn't know. Yeah, we never made a door to this place. Not that it would matter with giant fucking eagles. <laughs> Mother of God. Pretty much. That's a holy shit moment. Yeah, it's just inside because it can. It's using the GLaDOS excuse, you know? Oof. All right, so we, we've killed a bunch of animals. There are just dead animals everywhere. And and we've done our part. Oh, my God, they just killed another one. And Echidna <laughs> just came in and they stomped it. They were like, get out. Why? It's like, no, you killed my eagle friend. Now I'm on a revenge quest myself. It just gets stomped out. Yeah, both of our farmers are dead. Uh, oh no don't worry i i think we'll be all right i'm just gonna let everybody do all the jobs we're down to eight dwarves now we were up to Come a on, high of make 16. migrants yeah i'm gonna have to make some more tombs to cover our dead <laughs> come on in migrants we got free rooms that are all open up now and then we have a second room for when you retire the retirement box 
the most luxury retirement box after your short stay in your free room? All right, let's see. Nothing, nothing about giant eagles. Uh, you know, just just nothing about giant eagles in this. Uh, it's just insane animals. The fortress. <laughs> that is that is what this thing is. It, there's there's another giant eagle that died. There's an ibex. What the fuck? There's a ram that came in. There's a dwarf fighting the ram. The dwarf is dead. The, oh my god! Another one. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Who is he? Oh no. No, there's two rams. Holy shit. Oh my god. We have lost to animals. This is this is horrible. This is horrible. Like I, I thought I'd have a nice cozy stream and it's just nothing but murdered animals. It didn't and... even say it was like insane savage. Like these are just pat these are just moms that just have a pro it says agitated. You're doing something that's annoying them. Yeah, I guess we cut all the trees down. Yeah, Stonecutter is dead. Yeah, these oh, no. these animals are just roaming the fort killing people. Like I I don't know what to do other than to try to appease them somehow. Oh no. And we got my <laughs> Now the kangaroos are starting to my ass. Yeah, all the animals are rotting horribly. Like this is this is <laughs> Mad a... goes if only we have discovered door technology. I know. I built a road <laughs> instead of a door so I welcomed them in. That was my mistake. Yeah. This is a cursed That's why fort. doors live in a crap. It is. It's so good. That's it. You know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to form that military again. Create new squad. All right. With Crow and Goat against us, how can anyone prevail? True. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Let's 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 just assign them of whoever's left. All right. There's fewer. All right, everybody. All right, More I'm... food for us, but let's go killing rams. All right. Let's, let's go kill that thing. I know we can do it. Between as us, as someone yeah, doesn't show yeah. by himself right away. Okay, oh, they're yeah. chasing group them up, group them up. Oh, there's teeth of it flying everywhere. Okay, they got him. We got him. Let's beat that one down. Let's beat that one down. <laughs> this this is gonna be animal punch for it. <laughs> oh god. All right. So yeah, we beat we beat them to death. There's they beat Holy its shit. teeth out, and then it yeah. That thing had a name. It had killed so many people. Oh. <laughs> He's, he's just living the you dare come to our championships retirement land it's a whole bunch of like legendary animals that came here to like retire and this you is, plop a dwarf fortress and they're like all right we're gonna go kick their ass we got a lot of seriously injured dwarves we have no every, hospital we have every no single time where those animals come in they're like do you know who i am and you're like what and it's like yeah, we have, i am and they just tell you their name right like, okay the door the animal comes in and it starts playing like wwe music yeah, it's like the long road is just lined with like fireworks and fire show. Yeah, that's nuts. That is absolutely not good. Oof. Just a migrant wave will save the day. I doubt sure a migrant. Yeah, they, they've probably heard not good things. They've been like, hey, is that that fort where all those eagles are? And you're like, no. That doesn't what sound eagles? like us. You mean a e giant eagle valley? No, no, no. no giant eagles. eagle valley doesn't ring a bell. No, we've never, we've, we've, no. <laughs> that, that doesn't sound like us. <laughs> oh no, it's a militia captain with the wooden stool. It's like just, oh no, we have, we have rock thrones. That's all of our seats. So yeah, we're hitting them with a rock throne. A lot of people are using axes and pickaxes to kill them, just driving it through their skull. But it's like shitloads of giant eagles. Holy fuck. That's so good. No eagles anymore. I haven't seen one in years. Yeah, no. No, <laughs> eagles. one bites the head off the door next to you. It was started it started off so gentle. Like there wasn't there wasn't like anything to worry about. It was just like, oh, occasionally da 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 and then some of the animals started to disappear. And then it was on like Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong. It's bad times now. This this is the bad times part of the fortress <laughs> where like half the fortress just stinks. I'm gonna cancel all of the rock blocks building and the rock coffins. We have enough. Yeah, you get like a letter from home and it's like, Oh, I hope you're new like you're almost been gone a whole year. I hope everything's going well. You just look around all the bodies and corpses and giant eagles and stuff, and you're like, That's yeah, fine. They haven't <laughs> Oh my god. All right. Yeah. No, no. There's a set. Of, there's a drawing of a giant eagle woman. So I guess the dwarves are oh. talking about other 
neat things. We got several dwarves down here that are just seriously injured. Um, they they can't grasp or stand, and they oh, have no. motor nerve damage and sensory nerve damage. This one can't down. stand. This one can't stand. So we're going to need to build some sort of dwarf hospital and then hope one of the dwarves has enough brains and skills <laughs> to like mend them, which I highly doubt because I, I just, never... They're just going to try to rub dirt in it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be like that movie Sisu, you know, where it's like the guy gets mangled and just uses a belt to tie stuff off and rubs dirt and shit. Oh. All right. So we have one dwarf that is ecstatic, but most of the dwarves are unhappy. I'm going to try to build a dwarf hospital. Um, we're going to have to like drag a lot of these corpses out of the place. I, I'm going to say no more, no more. Don't worry about farming. Just, I'm just leave it fallow for now. We have more than enough supplies. I'm going to have to try to turn this fort around as best I can. <laughs> Dance is just laying stuff on the floor, just working like, well, I've seen worse. Perfectly happy. Sounds about right. Just just like, well, this seems kind of negative. Oh, well. Love the smell of rotting corpse in the morning. He's like, think on the upside. All the free room. It's quieter. Yeah. Quieter environment. in anyone's room any day now. They're think of all anymore. the activities we can do now. No one runs into each other. We're all relatively wealthier. No one's even hearing me right now because they're all dead. <laughs> yeah, Dots has been fine. It reminds me of like, remember when COVID first started and everyone thought it was the apocalypse because they'd seen too many like movies, horror movies about a plague killing all of humanity and no one would go outside like nobody. Yeah. For two weeks, I had the best time in the world because I when I had to drive into work, no one was on the highway. There was <laughs> nobody. So it's just like, wow, man, this is like... This is amazing. This is fucking amazing. I love it. Hell yeah. It didn't last. But, you know, I, I was just driving around like, this is fantastic. All right. So we got just, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Eldonius has his hunchback prince. I, I let everyone know on the on the uh, Black Pants Legion uh, community post. And apparently they're selling really well. And I, I feel. I got my hunchback pack. It's good. Oh, no. Sir Shaggyo is haunting the fortress. Oh, man. Shaggyo. Come on, man. You know, I'm sorry we forgot where you were buried, but we're doing our best. You're, we're, we're trying to do body recovery right now. Can you just give us a little while? Yeah, it's like step off our tits. We got this. Go hunt another giant eagle. That's what yeah, you should be focusing on. Go hunt the birds. Out. Go hunt the birds that cause your doom. Leave us alone. <laughs> Yeah, I never understood. Like, that's one of the things I actually struggled with on Dwarf Fortress is I can never instruct them strongly enough to move. Oh, there's the ghost. That that yes. Yeah, oh, that. Was, I was wondering who that be- that nice guy was. A yeah. ghostly stone cutter. Yeah, he's just he's healthy. He's healthy now. He values cunning. Let's see what what are his uh, thoughts. Oh uh, yeah, yep. He remembers sleeping in a very good bedroom and owning a fine bed. That's nice. Yeah. And now they're dead. But, you know, it's it's about the memories you make while you're alive, right? Healthy ghost. Healthy ghost. What's really nuts to me when we make Tech Talks Battle Tech is I will write out these ideas and I'll storyboard stuff for scenes like the the Saint 4G, which a lot of people liked, and then the the Swayback, you know, playing the guitar thing. Um we we describe I describe these crazy scenes and then Aldonius like plucks them out of my memory and just makes them. It's like somebody who can take an idea and fabricate it, which is just wild to me. It's, good artists are scary like that. God, I can't believe how many named animals we had. Now they're all fucking off. They've let they've left me alone for the time being. We just have piles of bodies everywhere, which is not great. Um, not ideal to have the, the bodies, you know, it, it, this, it's, it's a bad time in the fortress. It's, it's what we like to call difficult times. Oh, it says overlapping tomb. This is the best of times is the blurst of times. All right. So 
I accidentally overlapped a few tombs. But yeah, we should we should be able to put some of the people to rest as soon as our dwarves get done with uh, whatever they're doing. Because I'm telling them to finish the floors, which does make them happy. We've got just bones of everything laying everywhere. Uh, <laughs> there's a mangled skeleton of of one of our guys. Oh man, uh, yeah, Lucky Omen has gone stark raving mad. That's that's <laughs> thanks, that, Omen. That's one of our people who was crippled. Now they're just insane. The ghost is sitting down in the cafeteria, just hanging out. Um. All right. Well, that's... He says in chat, difficult times call for diff difficult measures. Then goes mad. <laughs> yeah, just like, here's what we need to do. Lose our shit and hunt people. And I'm like, leave my people alone. Come on. No, says sure Shaggyo. I will not. <laughs> oh, cool. And there's one of them's haunting the future hospital. Hey, a caravan arrived. Hey, did Excellent. you bring any extra people? Yeah, did you bring... Um, it's like, is my cousin here? I thought they went out here. It's like no one survived. We no longer have a broker, um, which is unfortunate. So anyone requested the depot, moved goods to... An, oh, you know what? We have all these weird clothes that are just gently used. Nobody, nobody knows. Oh, look, there's a body part. I'll sell that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. It's used. And then, oh, look. Like giant eagle feathers? <laughs> it's some, yeah, just we have all sorts of nice stuff. Look at all these shoes. Mismatched shoes. Don't mind the blood. Let's go ahead and sell these. Yeah, yeah. All right, there we yes. go. There we go. There we go. All right, we got that. Oh, and look at all these mittens and clothes that just showed up. We have all these pants. We're a used clothing store. That's what we are. It's time for the teeth economy to rise up. Yeah. Yeah. We got we got plenty of stuff. Yeah, that should do. I think that'll be all right. That'll be A-OK. -okay. Uh, and I said we're going to move stuff to and from the depot. We're going to have a fire sale. It's, it's all going to be fine. Don't worry. We have... We have a fine time. We're just going to, oh, diplomacy. They're like, what uh, What do you want? And I'm like, uh, nothing. Everything's fine. All the other dwarves are deep in the mine working. Why, yes, they are. They're, they're working so hard. Um, they can't come to the door right now. They're so busy. They said, don't, don't worry about it. We're all right. You know? Yeah, they're all down having a party. I'm just doing it up here because, you know, it's, uh, so someone's got to do it, right? Yeah. He's like, oh, let's go to the party. No, 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 you gotta you gotta head out. You got <laughs> Yeah, don't come in. Don't don't come in. We we have some lifelike dwarf sized statues of people that are uh see through and they move around. Um we have some people who are just standing where they basically broke down and they're screaming from their kangaroo wounds. Their excessive kangaroo wounds. <laughs> It is it is really bad, but hey, uh, we got the floor done, so that's that's a positive. It's a very fancy first floor, covered in bones, and covered teeth. in bones and teeth and all that. We've got nothing brought to the thing to trade because our our people have just lost their fucking mind, which is fine, I guess. Uh, let's he see. shows up. He's like, "Oh, maybe they found some rare minerals. Like, you want some teeth, bones, and pants, and shirts?" And they're like, "I guess." And you're like, "You know <laughs> what? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna move on. We've decided to go in a different direction. You know, that's that's what they decided. They that's, completely understand. They did they did the the corporate thing where they were like, you know, we've decided to go in a different direction here. And you're like, oh, I get you. And then you sadly look away." Ah, uh, let's see. We're going to add some more wheelbarrows to that, and we're going to add some more wheelbarrows to that because we have a lot of wheelbarrows, and that should help somewhat. Um, move the corpse pile around. It's it's becoming rather unsightly, and I'm, I'm hoping to sell off some things so I can trade for some. Look, we can sell some clothes to people. They, they don't want it. Oh. Oh, they, they don't they don't want the clothes. They're like, why? Why are you giving me those? But well, come on, it's 
they they could be warm and you could be cold. It's like just disregard clothes. the blood, you know. I it, yeah. yeah, it's just some bodies and stuff. And sure, these are used clothes. Where do you think they come from? Uh oh. Dots was trying to trade at the depot, and 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 the agitated animal came up, and he just ran off like fuck this. <laughs> Looks like some of our guard, uh, the depot's guards are killing some of the crazy animals, which is fantastic. Uh, yep. Oh, no, an agitated eagle just showed up. Oh, God. They heard you killed the giant one. <laughs> yeah, this is not great. Um, I'm going to see if they'll take the shoe. No, they will not take the shoe. They won't take anything. You know what? Offer is a gift. Look, here, take take my shoe. Here, you can have a shoe. It just grays out like, no. You cannot have shoe. Can I have some wine? No, he does not want the dead dwarf clothes. He's he's just, he's really not liking it. Apparently, they, they think our fortress is full of fail and sad. And, you know, that, that happens. That happens. But yes, the BPL does have a Discord, and uh, there's the link to it. That is the public Discord, also known as the Auxiliary. And good a friend, have some fun. Go make friends. Go shit post. Let's see, limestone blocks. Limestone blocks. Also, feel free to check out the website, theblackpantslegion.com. It's a pretty all right website, and it's coming along. We're slowly building fun stuff to it. And we're hoping to put our... our uh, I'm actually going to do a Legacy Dwarf Fortress game in the old style of yeah. a text-based Let's Play with uh, pictures and summary, much like uh, the old original uh, Let's Play forums. So it's going to be pretty neat. I'm hoping that we can trade some of these items, but no, it just shows zero value as soon as I do it. They're like, no, we do not want your crap. Also, I noticed that the caravan started to leave as soon as the giant eagle showed up again. I, they, they really know what's up here. They're like, no, thank you. And they just leave. I'm like, God damn it. All right, we still haven't <laughs> we still haven't buried all of our corpses. We're, no, we're almost done with the floor. It's not is, enough. Like there, there seems to be out of the, the rocks for the coffin, so it's just been ghosts, or no one's able. All right, the guys who are destroyed can't even move still. Yeah, they can't move. So we have like two, three dwarves that are crazy or destroyed, and we have like four dwarves who can run around, and all they're doing is like, I gotta finish the floor, and I'm like. Fine. Once you do that, maybe you'll do the other chores. And that is one of the issues with Dwarf Fortress is controlling them or compelling them to do the things that need to be done is easier said than done. It's typically very fucking hard. Um, they tend to be bastards. But as long as you don't give up in Dwarf Fortress, it's fairly hard for it to actually fail. Uh, you can have like a bad decade and keep the game going. Yeah, you can bunk in lots of situations. Bunker up and just drink and live and live, friend, and dig down a little bit. But yeah, it is. Sometimes you just get royally wrecked. I'm not sure if they'll buy bodies or corpses or ghosts, but we have plenty of all those things. Plenty. Yeah, we got a big pile of dead animals that we had to fight. I mean, we we had to basically kill these things all the way in. It it was like Normandy Beach. It was really bad. They, they just come in. I'm like, oh, God, this ain't so good. And the answer is no, it isn't. It is, in fact, very, very bad. <laughs> oh, and I think, yeah, they've had enough. They're, they're just like, we're not trading your crap. I think they left most of their stuff. Or no, they're they're chasing stuff around. Like the crazy animals are fighting them. So the traders keep leaving the trade depot because they're attacked by giant eagles and shit. Wow. Looks like they left some of their shit. Oh, uh, yeah, one of our cats died, which is unfortunate. No! But it's it's fine. Everything's fine. This fortress is fine. It's yeah, we see the ghost went back in their old room and they were like, "I enjoy this." I'm like, "You can live yeah. there. 
Man. Stop walking through the walls, please. Yeah, stay in your room. Please, please quit freaking people out. All right. He runs into the cafe like, woo, 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 woo. It's like, God damn it, I was eating. Yeah, please don't do that. I don't like it. Uh, this will be a hospital. And we'll put the doors that are sick in the hospital. Uh, yeah. It'll be it'll be the hospital. There. We, we have a hospital, technically, where the, the doors will receive no treatment. And they they will just lay there until they die. That is that is this room now. This is where the the wounded dwarves lay down, and are sad. Um, and hopefully, yeah. Let's see, health, no wounds. No, they're just sleeping here now. Uh, seriously injured. Health, yeah. No ability to stand. Diagnosis required. Yeah. Okay, so we have like three invalid dwarves of our remaining seven. Needless to say, this is going to be going slow. Mm -hmm. This is a good time. At least they're in beds now and repairing instead of just staying there in pain. <laughs> I don't think they're repairing. Oh, no migrants this season for some reason. Oh, boy. Thank you, game. I think it's because they realize that this is on the downslide. You know what I mean? Yeah, whatever ranking system that they have where it says like this could deserve more, this could deserve less. Probably sees you the struggle a little bit. And Cursed stuff. by kangaroos and giant eagles. That kangaroo True. literally beat like forty people to death. Oh cool, we're finally putting people in in the boxes we made for them. Excellent. Dots is the one who's burying everybody. He's like, in you go. No, I believe it. No more of that. Get in there. Get in that box right fucking now. Get in the box. Yeah, just Dots is like, uh-uh. Get in the box. No more haunting. Dots is burying people. Man. I would feel bad if this is a Door Fortress succession game because if this year happened and you handed it over to someone, they'd be like, what, what the fuck did you do? And you're like, nothing. It was just you know, a rough year. Some there's a few people I know there's a couple people in the Legion that can easily bring this thing like you get it a year from now and there's like a giant pyramid outside <laughs> well when we did our first run of a succession game I think we got like 15 years in and this is before the multi-core threading thing so it, it would slow down after like 10 years and that's where it got hard to continue but I remember yeah. Polish had the year of hell where he every did. everything bad happened at once, and he felt so bad. He was just going like, oh, my God, I have killed all the dwarves. And we're like, no, keep going. Like, half the dwarves died. Game runs faster now. <laughs> oh, That's alert. True. Sir Shagio has been put to rest. He stopped no. haunting people. Oh, thank God. That's yeah. a good thing. So Thanks, his, Shagio. Yeah, his, his ghost, his dots, like, put him in there, laid some salt over the tomb, and was like, be gone Go. He's like, all right. And just quit haunting people. Fuck off, ghost, into the forever box. I agree. All right, right. let's see. There's, yeah, so far, no more animal attacks. Uh oh. Dots got interrupted by a giant eagle. That's not so good. There's a swords door from the Another caravan. Another giant eagle. There's a swords door from the giant, from the caravan. Who appears to be no, not really, not really wounded, which is odd. They haven't joined their caravan yet. The caravan already left, and they're just hanging around now. Yeah, we're we're gonna have to really rethink this fortress a bit because holy shit, this isn't so good. We're gonna we're gonna build a nice like brick wall here uh, out of limestone blocks, and then we're gonna build another Solid. one there. And then we're going to build another one there. And we're just going to put traps in between. We should have done this from the beginning, but we're stupid. <laughs> and then we're going to... Can build... your own door set off your own traps? Uh, accidents happen all the time in this game. Every time I say, no, no, <laughs> there's no way they could. Or yes, that's of course possible. I am wrong. Every time I say that, I am proven a thousand percent wrong. And I am fucked the fuck up. Oh my God. Dots is fighting a giant eagle. Is he going to win? I don't know. Where is he? Uh, let's see. I must withdraw. Oh, no, it's running after him. It might be. 
It might be, but Dots is smart. Dots might run inside. Lucky Omen has been found dead, dehydrated. Oh that's, no! That's one of our corpses, I think, in the in the basement, that was just like slowly <laughs> rotting. Oh my god! The merchant is fighting. The merchant is fighting deer. You know, if it dies, do you get to keep everything? I think so. Yeah, there's the merchant. Oh my god! The merchant had to punch a deer to death. Yeah, Hell like yeah. a lot of the caravan coming out here has just been fucked up by the wildlife. So, I mean, this is technically <laughs> a win for us so far. Yeah, man. I lived as I died. I died as I lived, thirsty. That's like having that trade caravan show up when like some raiders show up. You just got to lean your guy in front of the hit the one of the caravan, then they're going to defend your base of their life. Yeah. And if they die, they don't take anything. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad time until it's a really bad time. So we oh, have yeah. six dwarves left, and we, we have limited assets, but we are alive somehow. Somehow. So uh, coming up soon is Cooking on the Rim with uh, Mr. Quish. So in about Indeed. 10 minutes, I will hang this up, and you guys can wait and see. Uh, he's been doing RimWorld for over a fucking year. A lot, of, a lot of rim world like a lot a lot of rim world and whenever i whenever i see that show on i'm like man i should reinstall it and then i find out i need to do a lot more mods and then i find out that i'm lost where i began 800 rim world mods need doing and i just don't have <laughs> it but uh yeah it's it's pretty pretty stupid in terms of what in, in terms of what madness can be had with enough people and enough time. And now we have our own channel. That's pretty crazy. Two channels. Pretty amazing. Yeah, lots 800. and lots of mods. Well, my I think my typical run of RimWorld is uh, two or 300 mods. Nothing too crazy. Yeah, the, yeah um, that's about my area too. The merchants have not left yet. They They are like afraid to leave, I think. Like because the birds keep attacking them, and when the birds keep pecking, they they start hecking. They've they've not had a good time. <laughs> they've they've six, really lost it. Six uh, dwarves and a trade caravan remain. Yeah, we're just we're just sitting here in a state of siege, more or less. Uh, yeah, handful of dwarves are left. This is pretty rough. Good Lord. Yeah, we've got... <laughs> oh, there's a giant eagle that actually is under this guy's bed. There's a giant eagle that got down here and tried to finish off our people. This is like, horrifying. Yeah, he knew they could smell the injured and try to go for the kill. Yeah, this is not good. So we've got we've got people who are running around trying to handle some basic shit. Um, barely keeping the fortress alive. Uh, like Dots is just hauling stuff everywhere. And we've we've got some some dwarves in here that are just seriously injured and without a doctor, actually. And let me get into uh, I think it's nobles, right? Chief medical dwarf, no relevant skills. Dots is a doctor now. Yeah. yeah doctor Dots will figure out what's wrong. He'll be like legs not straight, and I'll be like ah, that old quandary yeah, again. Yeah, I. This has been a cursed fortress so far. We thought it was going to be a fine and dandy, like cotton candy. Afternoon. It was such a nice area, you know. It felt peaceful. The trees were up at one point, and then the animals got real mad. Yeah, we cut down a lot of the trees, and then it was like Fern Gully meets Vietnam. It just got really rough, <laughs> real quick. It Every was time all... we looked up, there was another giant something in the face going, "I'm gonna kill." A giant <laughs> eagle. It, it. It's just like, oh my sweet baby Jesus. All right, so we're slowly building this trap way in here, except we don't have enough dwarves to actually manufacture enough traps to kill all the animals that come in, which is lame. But uh, we're slowly burying all of our dead, which is, I, I'm still impressed by that. Still impressed. <laughs> I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. Get these dwarves and break their knees. <laughs> yeah, no shit. This is this is some pretty rough stuff. All right, we're gonna 
We're going to slowly... Okay, everyone is kind of barely maintaining. Barely. Yeah, Dots is carrying the handfuls of teeth he picks up off the ground here outside and has been tending to some of these dorms. But, um, you know, they're, they, they, they're going to need a crutch. And they've been in bed for almost a year. What a rough time. What a great time, though. I mean, it's Door Fortress. It's not all bad. It's a time. It was the best of times. It was, the it was a time. It yeah. was a, it, it's a time. It was a time. There is a time, you know. Voynich Manuscript. Ah, the Voynich Manuscript. Yeah, that's an interesting study in um, creating a fake language. So it went around for a while and people thought that it was a manuscript written in a fake language or an unknown language called Voynichese until someone figured out how you could very quickly write a handwritten manuscript in that time period by using a simple cipher system and laying it all out. Um, it's kind of an interesting study in cryptology and cryptography as an art form. Um, it's really beautiful. It's when you look at a lot of these older attempts at making uh, fake artifacts like that, if done well, it's an art form in its own sense. It would be like if I made a modern illuminated copy of a book um, that looked really, really well. And you're like, holy shit, was this written in the 1400s? And I'm like, yeah, but look in the corner. And you're like, oh, there's a dick butt, you know, like meme <laughs> from the old Internet. Yeah. yeah, that would be that would be a, a way of making a fake artifact, which is an art form in itself, if done well. That's awesome. Okay, Chief Medical Dwarf Dots is fighting a peregrine falcon. Oh, man. We never dealt with those guys. Well, they seem to stook a dive bomb us very irregularly, you know? Ye old dick butt, circa 1490. Yes. Um, there's a lot of weird shit in uh, illuminated manuscripts, especially in what's called the marginalia, the stuff in the sides. Uh, people would draw all sorts of stuff. Yeah, the caravan people still haven't left. I think it's because every time they try, there's something out here that attacks them and they freak out, which is awesome because that means that all this stuff here might be mine in time. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just slowly take this thing apart and I will take it for my own. We have buried <laughs> not all of our dwarves, but as many of the ones as we've been able to find, um, we're, we're getting there. We are really getting there. This is, this is a rough fortress to say the least. I'm going to tell my one miner to mine like crazy so I can get out <laughs> some of this more coffin area outside is filled with nothing but animal corpses there's animal bones everywhere and it's not all mine these are just like random animals that wander around or are killed by the murder animals that are the higher prime animals of murder here so yeah it's pretty nuts <laughs> uh pablo what we've got here is a fortress that once had 16 dwarves now has six because we were attacked by endless giant eagles crazy peregrine falcons, peregrine wombats, falcons wombats rams a giant kangaroos. fucking kangaroo yeah, yeah. and we we're barely scraping together we're holding on it's so bad that the caravan still hasn't left because every time they try to leave they get attacked and then they can't make it out so we have some dwarves that are over here that yeah there's two caravan dwarves right there that are slowly trying to make it out uh their animals have been wounded like this is an absolute shit show but yeah this is classic <laughs> door fortress where you're like oh this place looks nice no it is not so we have a handful of dwarves left that are trying really hard to tend to the wounded continue working on places hauling some of this debris burying bodies um the typical things that any any fortress goes through but this Swish, place did you just did Chris, did you just change your name to Swish and a million underscores? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, this place Holy is shit. lousy with eagles. <laughs> Fucking eagles. That's funny. That's great. At any rate, I think we should probably hang it up for a question yeah. and get get ready. So thank you guys for all joining us today. 
uh, we really appreciate uh, your your guys coming out and checking out the Black Pants Legion. If you guys want to hear crazy stuff, we just updated the podcast. We have more stuff coming with that. I would recommend watching or listening to the Magistrata Mundanus on that. That's a great RPG that Diggs and many of my other friends were in. Uh, check out the Black Pants Legion website, theblackpantslegion.com. And we have a lot of fun stuff on there, including uh, workups of all of our episodes. And we're slowly getting more on there, thanks to the wonderful efforts of our team. And thank you guys for checking us out. Uh, soon enough, we will have Quish doing cooking on the rim. And you're going to see some bad shit happen because it's rim world. It's, of course. It's rim world. It's going to happen. It's going to be fucked up. But hey. He actually is starting a whole new uh, colony tonight. So if you guys want to get some of your names in game, stick around. Uh, he he last, I watched his last one and apparently they just got destroyed at near like kind of like near the end of the stream. So he called it early a little bit. That's fine, man. That's the joy of RimWorld. It's not that mm-hmm. hard to restart. All right. I will talk with you guys later. Thanks, Diggs, for joining me. And thank you, audience. Thank Please you. stick up and more crazy shit will happen. Until then, take care of each other. <laughs>